come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. (laughs) Welcome to the Half in the Bag Movie Podcast. What are you doing? That's not entirely true. I'm half in the bag. But... I disagree with the first 10 what? seconds of this podcast so hard that I, I don't... You're more I'm... than half in the bag? Ooh, no, the, just... Okay. Strong I'm disagree. Just, yes, All right, hard strong disagree. disagree. Hard pass. We love Big the guys. We're on the feelings. way. <laughs> on our way to the on bag. The Jesus, this feels like an away game. Uh, so this is the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast that you've stumbled across on the darkest corners of the internet. Thank you for listening. You can yes. find us, if you haven't already, on uh, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Podcast Addict, and everywhere that fine podcasts are found. If you found us there, stop what you're doing. Well, no. Don't keep, stop what you're Keep playing this. Keep just doing. While please, you're please. doing this, multitask. hop on over, multitasking, and give us a like, a star review, a thumbs up, a review. Probably whatever. a multi-star review. A yeah, multi-star yeah. review. Because, yeah, not just a star. Yeah. <laughs> but you know why that they need to do this? Because this it helps with the algorithms. Yes. And that's it's all about we algorithms. Really Those algorithms. About. Although yeah. I'm more concerned about that you just, uh, half our listeners probably just stopped listening because you said, stop what you're doing, and they now <laughs> cannot hear the rest of the directions. <laughs> it's all over. Stopped. Okay, so I'm going to change done. that in the future. Please no do. more stop what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, give us uh, give us a review because that helps us get found by other folks who are interested in the same stuff that you are. Tell other people about us. And hey, we'll even read those reviews on our show later in Igor's sure, mailbag sure. segment uh, later on before we do our we wrap reading. ups, which I'm read. sure we can read. We can. Sometimes we, we, we braille. Do. We've also sure. established yes. that. Yeah. Sean we've, we've, is an advocate I'm for an the braille. I'm an avid brailler. Yep. Uh, need it or not. Well, let's go around the table and introduce ourselves to this week's Saturday Night Freak Show Irregulars. Uh, I'm Chris. Holly. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Sean! What did we watch tonight? <laughs> we watched 1998's The Faculty. The Faculty. The Faculty. The Faculty. And to watch the faculty, we recruited a member of the faculty. Oh, yes. Of, <laughs> yes. A faculty. of a faculty. A faculty. Uh, a, of a school which will be unnamed. Yes. A faculty. <laughs> it's okay. A, a current faculty member at a current school. So there you go. Yes. <laughs> so you're going ex- to... Uh, I'm probably the least prepared for this quiz. I don't know. You're going to relate your experiences versus what you've seen on screen. Uh-huh. You're going to tell us the similarities. Oh, it was exactly like high school. I feel so. How many people were stabbed Wait, after from, your school? Yeah. Yes. From the student perspective or the teacher perspective? Uh, uh, from both. Uh, there yeah, no, go. no. We <laughs> do, uh, I mean, we are around the Rockford area, so the death toll may be the same comparable to schools. <laughs> Just mean, saying it might that's be. True. Actually, Aliens. theoretically, uh, nobody, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it, but but nobody actually dies. <laughs> I think some people did die. They, they kind of we'll deal with sex machina, we'll all of it, don't they? Well, um, I think we'll, when we get to the end. kind of do the magic we'll waving we'll of there, the fingers? Okay. We'll I don't mean to ruin it for everybody, but. Well. We're going to root it for him anyway, so yeah. we'll get That's there. Right. Okay, yeah. so, if it uh, wasn't ruined the first time you watched it, just by watching it, <laughs> we'll ruin it. Tonight. That was, It was so 90s. It's very uh, 90s. I, I, so man, I feel like I'm in 90s. college again. 1998. Okay, so this follows Scream. It follows, it follows I Know too. What You Did Last Summer. Okay, yeah. so we're very and, in and it. Oh, we're in it. And it's definitely, it. it's definitely in that sardonic phase of of Miramax's kind of zenith where it, it, it was so popular, Miramax. That they could just put out whatever, this and was, people would go see it. This was straight Miramax, right? I didn't see a Dimension logo. No, it was no, Dimension. Dimension. Oh, did, it was, was there Dimension? Dimension? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must have missed. I was looking uh-huh. away. Dimension. It has the uh, the, the prerequisite mm. Marco Beltrami score, it which you does. Have to have. Which was he was just on contract for Miramax and Dimension at that point. Yeah, I think it's like, so. It's a scary movie starring teens. Marco Beltrami will <laughs> score which, this, which is, is far more frightening in hindsight with with Harvey involved. Uh, you know, a lot you're of, like, wow, what kind of horror actually went on on that set? Yeah, but this one. Has the, you know, I mean, the upside that, as a Robert that would be Rodriguez the real movie, horror movie to make now, but is, it takes yeah. place so far removed from Hollywood that, like, you think he actually flew out to Austin? Because Robert Rodriguez, I bet you he cast every girl in that movie. No, not not Robert Rodriguez. So, yeah, Harvey uh, had the sign off. I'm sure. I'm because sure. There is a I'm sure. Right now that like for yeah. uh, Planet Terror. Uh, Harvey had to sign off in Rose McGowan, Rose McGowan yeah. as the star in that. So yeah, yeah. yeah and so I know the, the horror off. probably started in pre-production when they were casting. That's where the horror of this movie really started. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that Josh Hartnett. I just heard he was on uh, Malton on Movies, and he was saying that during the faculty, he was working 
both uh, Halloween H two O and the faculty like at the yeah. same time. Mm-hmm. He was shuttling Ooh. back and forth. Yeah. I think Ooh. so. That was also I think a Harvey. Uh, that was a dimension. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so it was Bob. That's Bob, Bob is, Weinstein. Yeah, Bob's dimension, but Harvey's. I'm sure, and this is not. A, if Harvey's probably got his hand in everything. That's not a pun. I want to. <laughs> say, oh my god, sure that was awful. Yeah, but that's. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Harvey ruins that pun, not the pun. It's there, right. by the well, way. we should there say that fellow me tour Harry Knowles of Harry Annie Knowles Cool News in also this? appears in this movie. I haven't kept track of that. How's that going on? Like, I did think he, that did he fucking leave. And that was ba- that? yeah. He had to step away Good. from his own website, and his sister, I think, is uh, taking over. I don't know. I haven't been back since. Is uh, it his sister, or is it like him in a wig? He's like, oh, I don't know, because there was Harry like a whole, Knowles, a whole lot of stuff. Website now, because they were connected with the Alamo Draft House, and there was an issue there. Wow. I think, also. Yeah, and this this was shot in because in that area in too, Austin. In Austin. Yeah. yeah, you know, I know they're a big fan of it. Did Alamo have, World, but pretty darn close. Did Alamo they have a, oh, in, Alamo, uh, Alamo San, Draft San House is from yeah, it's from uh, Austin. It is. They also own Neon and everything. Yeah, the, the production company. But they also well, it's Tim are League. Big. It was he's different than uh, so Tim League owns Alamo Draft House and Neon Pictures. It was a different guy, Devin Faraci. Devin Faraci is the one yeah. who's associated with Alamo Draft House because that's Birth Movies Death. That's the yeah. website that they're. He was yeah. the editor in chief of. That's mm-hmm. the one who had the problem. He had to step away from that. Yeah. Yeah. So Me Too has invaded the Saturday Night Freak Show with this pick. Thank that's you very nice. much yeah. of the faculty. <laughs> and did you even hit on the fact that Danny Masterson? Is oh yeah. Nice? Yes. We forgot about oh, we, we, we haven't gotten there yet. And, and yeah. And even <laughs> triple. Wow. There it, it is. I, all of it. Man. Not not my intention. <laughs> When I brought this to That's bring okay. some sort of uh, you know <laughs> social issue to uh, light in this, it just happened to be that way. Yeah. What ha- whatever happened to Birds Robert of a Rodriguez? Flock together. What I happened mean, to Robert Rodriguez? Well, what happened to him after like, this? Where, or yeah, what where is he, he doing now? right now? Because right now, I mean, at this point, are we talking like faculty now? No, or now, now, now. This is 2018. This. He did like Sin City 2, and then there that was, was just years like, ago, you. Sean. I mean, but no, I'm saying he's running the El Ray Network. I think he got that off the ground. Didn't it, oh, Battle didn't Angel Alita is oh, his. that's did, coming out. Is this he summer. directing? Yeah. All right. So yeah. that's what he's been working on for probably the past couple of years. It's not Spy Kids Five. No, he gave up on three. Like, but three was like in 2003. No, there's a Spy Kids 4D. They have a 4D it's now. 4D? Yeah, there's a 4D. 4D. Apparently, oh, they so travel through time. Fuck uh, all that. <laughs> wow. I did own Spy Kids. Lava there, 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 there it is. They're no longer kids. What was the other there's, kids they've movie? They've got to be spy Holes? young adults by now. Yeah, sure you would think. Lava. they got to grow up. Yeah. Holes. Isn't that a Robert Rodriguez movie? I think it is. No. Right? Holes is it Ro- Holes Oh, is let's find Robert that out. Really? That can't All right. be. No. No, How much no, no, money no. are we putting on the table no. for this? I'll put uh, $5 on the $5. Table. Who wants to bet? I'm, I don't I, bet I, you. I'll, I'll double bucks. that. Are we talking directed? No, no, directed. no, no. no. Right, I'll bet you. No, 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 no. I'll bet you. No, 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 no. I'll bet you. Five bucks. We're going to find out right now. We're gonna, I'll Gentlemen's find out. Agreement. I'm watching it. Let's do this. Oh, you got it, Sean? Yep, I got it. All right. Let's see. All right. Directed. Robert Rodriguez. What year do we think Holes was? Mm. I don't know. All right, let's do. We got Spy 2003. Kids. 2003. 2003. 2003. Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Spy Kids. I got three. it. You got it. Who directed? Andrew it? Davis. There you go. Oh, shit. Right. Andrew Davis. Okay, fine. There you go. I, um, yeah. John. Uh, and yeah, and he was. So what was also, the other kids? He also movie directed then? The Fugitive. Shark Boy and Lava Girl. No, I thought there Andrew was Davis directed The Fugitive and Under Siege. Yeah, yeah. probably his masterpiece. Uh, okay. Yes, absolutely. Under Siege is I good. Did he do? Well, yeah, <laughs> actually, did he do like US Under Siege? Siege? I love Under Siege. <laughs> I do I too. Do. Did he do U.S. Marshals? No, uh, oh, let, let me see. Let me see. Oh, yeah. That's also a good I movie. I forgot about no. U.S. Marshals. U.S. Marshals. He did not. That's Robert a great that's movie. He did Collateral yeah, Damage. That, uh, I love that movie. Above the Law. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. Yeah. Back when we Shorts. thought Steven Seagal was pretty cool. Shorts. Damn it. That's okay. All right. Yep. Shorts. I should have bought... Bet the five bucks on shorts. shorts. I'll get you that money at some point. Right. I have yeah. no cash. You've out. all heard it. That's fine. Yeah, I don't, uh, where That's did right. you make the Robert Rodriguez connection? Because it was hold. Shorts. Shorts. Oh, was the okay. I got you. Yeah. I got you. for all the time in the world. When the fuck did that happen? I know 2011, but. The 3D boom. We're, Interesting. So we're talking about Spy Kids, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about Robert, Robert, Robert Rodriguez. Okay, I have, I have to, I have to, right. I have to confess. I, I adored Robert Rodriguez when this came out. I I, 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 I think, all... and I still think he is a pretty darn clever dude. Sure. I, I, but I want to, I, I, I'll leave it at that until later because, yeah, I, 
He did well, a he, lot of things, especially in, in independent cinema, like that. Yes. Yeah, he's obviously. Yeah, El Mariachi, mm-hmm. uh, Desperado, which is pretty much El Mariachi yeah. 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's basically El Mariachi yeah. with a budget and, basically. you know, Once Upon a Time And then the other Mexico. one is El Mariachi yeah. with Johnny Depp. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, he's, he knows how to make a fantastic movie. He does with, I, I was going to say limited resources, but he he's built his own full, like, thing on his ranch in Austin. Yeah, where yeah. He's, yeah. Just, well, he's, he's, sort of, he's sort of like, because he's sort of like, Edited George this Lucas movie, of like, yeah, oh, sure. in, the like, of, like of just he does his own visual effects. action kind of stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, since City, he's like, I'm gonna shoot at my house, right. yeah. you know. And, and I, I love that. I really, really admire. And he teaches that. a cooking school on his DVDs. He does, does he? ten minute, ten minute wow. cooking school. Yeah, you can learn how to make that pulled pork that Johnny Depp's going crazy yeah. about in Once Upon a Time in really? uh, the what? In, uh, in Mexico on the DVD. Oh yeah. Wow, and I think the reason we mention all of this is because this is a Robert Rodriguez movie. But to m- I think, at least all of us at the time, this kind of felt like a director for hire version of Robert Rodriguez mm-hmm. making a movie because well, it yeah. doesn't well, feel. Well, like I guess yeah, that's his the thing. Flair. It's like I'll what, agree with that. Yeah. What do you expect from a Robert Rodriguez? Because okay, before this, we're saying he had done El Mariachi for like what four thousand yeah, dollars? Yeah, it was, it was, kind of crazy. It was yeah. something absurd. And then he did. Uh, well, he did a movie called Road Racers for Showtime, and then he, his next feature was Desperado, and then after that was From Dust Till Dawn because I think that was the thing. Right. Rod- Rodriguez yeah. and Quentin Tarantino and the 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 indie darlings of the nineties, which was like after. After the action and you know superstars of the eighties, snarky gave way to dialogue the, and and, and bloody the action, 90s, yeah. yeah. And it was the indie indie film boom, and these are the guys who like kind of rose up out of it, and like we recognize their names. Uh, then after from dusk till dawn, we're saying that this was his next film. This yeah, next one? yeah, and, and, and it feels to me a little like the film he had to make in order to complete a contract. Or if I mean that's. You know, it's I like, might agree yeah. with that, but it also felt it's like, like I have the, a two-picture um, deal, and I can't wait to get back to something I want to do. But this, I have to get done. I have to finish this. That's quite possible. It also Maybe. may be them trying to. Uh, I, I think Bob and Harvey were trying to like get someone for this movie because this script, I think, by the writers, and I forget their names, has Kevin, been Kevin was, Kevin well, Williamson, Kevin Williamson was scream guy by the story by with the original script that was floating around since like 1990, I think. Oh, they brought in Kevin Williamson who rewrote the script. Mm-hmm. This is why he gets screenplay by on this. Um, and I think they were trying to bring in a director to do it. And it, I mean, you're right. It may be a fulfilling of contract type thing, or it may have been something of, uh, I don't know, trying to get Robert Rodriguez on a bigger scale movie, mm-hmm. like trying to give him you something gotta bigger do this to do. In order. But that's the thing, like Dimension, it's weird. Like now Robert Rodriguez would go from indie, you know, guy doing the small movie to uh, Fast and the Furious 10. Yeah. Right? Right. yeah. But back Instead then it was like lower to but he, the yeah, fact. But that's the thing, right? He, by staying with Dimension, you know, he he wasn't going. It was like, I'm indie and these guys gave me my first shot. And so I'm going to stay with them and continue to work up the ranks. Through. But like Dimension didn't make big. No, expensive no, no. Right. Films. no, no, no. Right. no. So it's like he's never going to hit uh, the Iron Man level. And again, I guess those movies, those kind of movies weren't being made at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that jump, that jump didn't happen. Like you see now, like Trevor uh, uh, James Gunn uh, oh. or Colin yeah. Trevorrow yeah. makes yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah, movie yeah. Yeah. What was and it? then uh, Safety Not Guaranteed Safety Not Guaranteed, Safety not guaranteed. and then Which gets I love Jurassic that movie. World yeah, that movie but like you could not see like oh I'd give that guy Jurassic no, World no I would never make that connection that's the jump we make but, but that's also What's I think it, it, makes it, monsters and then goes to Star Wars well I think that's also kind of the role of the producer more than the director nowadays too because I think a lot of what you see in something like Jurassic World now is a guy who can direct a scene but it really is a production machine behind what they bring to the table more so than anything else because there's a okay. reason why John yeah. Favreau can walk away from Iron Man and because the Marvel doesn't miss a beat because right. it's Kevin Feige yeah. just yeah. really behind right. it yeah. but the thing, it's like, it yeah. does seem like in some ways that Hollywood has recognized like these indie guys are coming up and doing these things that are you know that somebody's taking notice of and if they are allowed to keep going they're either gonna you know 
sputter out or they're going to make something that's going to draw attention away from our product. Right. So we're going to take them and we're going right. to make them these generic, like you can't yeah, tell. We have to assimilate they, them before yeah, they yeah, actually yeah, because like, we, you we, can't yeah, we tell don't who Edgar directed them fucking because... Jurassic World or Kong Skull Island or, no. you know, any of these yeah. things. It's like, or uh, Fast and Furious 7, yeah. you know, it's like they bring them on and then it's like after that, like, yeah, you can make another movie for hire, one of these big budget things because you've done it before, mm. but like you've lost all your sense of uh, individuality and identity. Yeah, the thing well, that I think that's why you, you see Edgar Wright not doing that with something like Ant Man. Sure. I mean, I know we're kind yeah, of going on a tandem yeah. here, but he knew what would happen if he decided to go that route. Yeah, he's like, you're, you're going to make it all vanilla and and fit into what you're trying to do, right. and that's just not something I want to be a part of. Not that that's necessarily bad because right. Ant Man was enjoyable, but it yeah. just wasn't Edgar right. Wright. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. And I guess this is sort of Robert Rodriguez's. Non Edgar like Wright movie, it I guess. It feels like it. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> yeah. answer. It feels like know. it is. It's just not fully. It's just like. Is eh, he selling just, out? I don't know. Just keep it in this because I don't know. There's some. Uh, it feels like uh, Robert Rodriguez directing a movie that doesn't have green screens in it. I don't know because he's. Yeah, but he came his stuff bef- prior to this movie. Oh, that's very true. That's very You're true. You're saying true. Yeah. Sin City and on where he right. like embraced right. the right. digital technology. Yeah. That's or very true. Yeah. Um. So this movie, The Faculty, is a uh, like a it's like a fifties. The closest analogy I had to it when watching it tonight was kind of like the Blob with Steve McQueen or mm-hmm. something. It's the kids have to band together mm-hmm. to yeah. fight the alien menace, but it's given a very nineties, uh, very nineties, very nineties. Thanks See, to don't... Tommy Hilfiger. <laughs> Thank you, oh, Tommy. Explain God. that he sponsored uh, Tommy Hilfiger sponsored all the clothing in this film. Yeah, that tag, it, it was that actually part of the advertising. Yeah. 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 yeah, and you can see it prevalently. I don't know. The labels, they may, be, they may even have made the, the the football jerseys. I don't know, but they they they. they I remember the advertising I back doubt then. It. And yeah. it, what I don't. They look like just it's a polo, and then it's got a tag on it. I'm like that's it. That's what Tommy Hilfiger was. <laughs> that, that guy was in, somebody made Tommy Hilfiger overnight, and I it, go look up the story of how he became famous because it's fascinating. Oh yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. How he actually like rose to prominence and what, and, and that's probably what financed the film. I mean, if you think about I mean, it, maybe like that's. Yeah, a, I'm sure that's a big Harvey part of it. probably thought, "Wow, I don't have to pay a dime. Tommy's going to finance this movie I'm if sure he puts in his clothes." There's some yeah. corporate money definitely flowing. And Robert there. Rodriguez can make it for like twelve dollars. That's very true. So yeah. why not? Yeah, because that's his thing. I can't right? It's like he can. I sell three shoot tickets it, and I break. He even. can direct it. He can edit it. Right. I don't think he shot this one, but he did. Mm. You know, I'm sure he had. So I'm sure he was very close with the cinematographer to figure this shit out. He's the one man band. I guess that's what made I mean, you know is, yeah. Robert Rodriguez yeah. was was the first guy who like didn't. I don't think he went to film school. Rebel without a crew. Yeah, that was the book. was the book that's that the he book, wrote. Yeah. Yes, yeah. about how to do it all by yourself. Yeah, and he did. But he was one of the first guys to do that. I think right. It yeah. was like There's I so can much do so that every he, job on the set. You mean, in the nineties, yeah. I mean, I think you know Nick Cassavetes is a lot like that, or John Cassavetes kind of comes from that same vein. Not Nick. I'm sorry. Nick, we no, we've done John Cassavetes. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, John. John Cassavetes kind of did that as well, but he's certainly from that ilk of I I, I can do it on my own if yeah. nobody else will help me. Yeah, which is what I re- I love about him in a lot of ways. But as long as you're non-union, I guess that's the thing, right? He's non-union, so he can do all these that's very do true. all these parts himself. Himself. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's part of the guild still. I don't think he's I part of the director's so. guild. There was there was that whole thing with like when the first Sin City came out. There was a the whole argument of like uh, directing. Do you give credits. him WGA or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, with, yeah. Uh, what's his oh, name? the special guest director Quentin Tarantino or Frank well, Miller? Frank Miller yeah. was the yeah. co-director, yeah. and that's there was a the whole thing about it. And yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't. Yeah, because he's, he's like still the guy the basically guild. directed this movie in the storyboards with the comic. Yeah, so he yeah you know, pre-directed it and yeah yeah. So this movie, would you say it is fair to say that it is uh, like a 90s mashup of Invasion of the Body Snatchers and The Thing with a little bit of Shivers or perhaps... Night of the Creeps. There's a little Night of the Creeps I would, in there. I'd go with Night of the Creeps. Well, have you seen Shivers? I have not seen yeah. Shivers, so I don't uh, know the reference. It's the slugs that crawl around and they sure. get the slugs that crawl around, that's yeah. always a thing. And I suppose, you know, again, in the movie, and this I thought was, you know, it was very 90s when I was watching it tonight going like, oh, shit, this is dating the movie, where your characters are these pop culture aware kids who are like, you it's know, very this is just like reference. what happened in that movie, the yeah. invasion of the body snatchers. Yeah. And then they go on to explain like they bring it up all the fucking time yes. to the point where you're like 
Just like Scream. Yeah, yeah just like yeah, Scream. <laughs> because it Almost is like Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams. Same guy. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, the Invasion of the Body Snatchers just ripped off, you know, the Puppet Masters by Robert E. Highland, or Robert Highland, which yeah. was made in a movie with Donald Sutherland. Have you seen this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Like yeah. the actual Puppet Masters or about Invasion of the Body Snatchers? I've seen Donald Sutherland. <laughs> oh shit! Was he in both of them? Yes. He oh, did, was, was in, he in? Yeah, that's right. Because he's in. Did the, they do the puppet the, masters? Yeah, the puppet masters. And he was in movie, that? And he's in oh, it. Oh Jesus! He was Who's in the both? main person. He's not the main guy in that. No, but he's in it. Um, it's like Leave Schreiber. That can't be right. That can't. It's not like nineties right. era. It's a dimension is it again. A, is it after? Oh, they did the puppet masters after. I think it feels like it's ninety two or something like that. It's so early. This. It's early. Uh, Could be eighty nine. I'm on it. Okay, Captain Google is on it. But Donald Sutherland is in the best version, if I may say. Anybody going to disagree? Of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I'll agree with that. It's definitely not Invasion with Daniel Craig and Nicole Kidman. (laughs) You're right. Where they totally. You know how many times that movie's been adapted? That story. It's called The Body Snatchers by Jack Finney. It's. uh, I I love the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Which one is one of my favorites? Isn't there what 1955? I think one with Kevin McCarthy. Bat. Wait, I don't know. Black and white. Yeah, like Kevin McCarthy. That's a good movie. I I I love that one. Yeah, but the the 78 one with Donald Sutherland. That one's my favorite. I like like, that one. Yeah, yeah. I watched that. I hadn't seen it until like uh, probably last year. But I watched it last year and I was like, this is a good movie. Mm-hmm. I'm kind yeah. of surprised. And that was the yeah. first one that I Ooh. saw. I saw Ooh. that before the 50s. Puppet Masters was written by David Goyer. Really? Ooh, what year that, was it? Uh, 94. Wow. So the I'm Dark Knight I'm prequel. Wow, who's who's that's kind of interesting. Who's the main guy in it? Uh, with Donald Sutherland, Eric Ty. Okay. Right. Director was Stuart Orme. All right. Oh, that one. <laughs> Orme? I, I, just because it's written by David Goyer, I kind of want to see this. And well, it's Goyer kinda, wrote three credits, yeah, but, but he's Goyer, one of them. Goyer yeah. wrote Blade Three. But I'm on board that the only one I really remember, re- remembered was Donald Sutherland. Yeah, because it has yeah. that end. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Well, yeah. It's fucking yeah. freaky as yeah, shit. There's also the stuff. dog with the human face. Um, that's a good movie. And then they made it again as bo- the Body Snatchers. Yeah. Abel Ferrari did it. In the ni- Force Whitaker's in that one. It's on an I, army base in the nineties, early nineties, ninety two, something like that. I think and so. Then again I remember the invasion with Nicole Kim. I think the one you were just talking about, the previous one, was the one I saw on HBO a lot, which freaked me out as a kid. I don't know. The I, Donald I, Sutherland. One? No, the one after that. Oh, the Body Snatchers. Yeah, Body Snatchers. I Gabrielle. Think I oh, it's not Gabrielle Union. What the fuck's her name? Gabrielle. I can't Gabrielle remember. Luna. She was in. Huh? Gabrielle Luna. No, she was a 90s actress. I don't know what, but I said, was she naked in that movie? And yep. this is what Briefly, I remember about. That's, that's the, the one. one. That's, that's the one. Because that's what he remembers. Because that's that's what he remembers. <laughs> no, no, I don't remember. There it the, is. But that freaked me out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Then Gabrielle Anwar. Yes. Gabrielle Anwar. Very, very attractive that, No, that's lady, the yeah. scene I remember. I mean, because I was young and there was nudity, but it also freaked the fuck out of me, and that's what but, I remember uh, watching wasn't so Meg much. Tilly? What? Because Meg Tilly was in that as that's well. That's her crazy Ooh. mom. Yeah. Well, here's the thing that distinguishes I've never seen that version, these movies, right? It's Invasion of the Body Snatchers is basically these pods uh, from space come to Earth and grow into uh, people when they're sleeping and they take them over and then uh, people become this uh, emotionless mm-hmm. uh, conf- emotion. uh, mass of um, conformity and conform- yeah. 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 the hive mind. Yeah. Right. It's right. almost like every kid on a cell phone nowadays. But I that's mean, that's the Stephen pod. King did that's that. The pod. That's, that's that is the, the hive mentality. Yeah, did they you, made that movie. About the movie or the book? Well, there's a book and a movie. <laughs> the book's better than I didn't see the movie. The book's not bad. I started the movie and turned it off. You probably it had should. John Cusack and, and uh, Sam, Sam Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, the movie looks like good. shit. Yeah. The book's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. But it was so the idea being that these creatures from space come down and they are going to take over the country it's and then eventually the world by you know starting small in a small town. And branching out, and so it's this kind of virus infection. Right, uh, as I mentioned in the movie, would you do it and blow up the White House Independence Day style, or would you go through the back door in Ohio? Well, it depends yeah. on the what firepower you have. That's I suppose if you've got true. the big ass ships, you fucking right. blow, if you're blow gonna, everything. If you're going to blow shit up, you go big. If you're going to invade, you go through the back door. Yep. Yeah. Like the Ruskies. Well, I guess that's the thing. <laughs> the, the cold the, the, there, there's a connection to Ruskies here because um, Summer Phoenix, sister of Leaf Phoenix, back in my day, Is it Leaf River Night? Phoenix, Leaf Phoenix was in Ruskies and a movie called Ruskies. A movie called Ruskies serious. in the eighties. <laughs> oh, gee, yeah. they just and they just that is now it's Joaquin like, it's Phoenix. Ruskies. Leaf is for those Joaquin. of you guys who don't know, because yeah. he was his original name is Leaf, and his parents were hippies. So River yep. Leaf makes- Summer. There may have been a wind rain. in there. I don't know. Wind, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah I'm rain, sure. Rain, 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 rain
Fire. Art bark. <laughs> Earth. Uh, Earth, wind, and fire. <laughs> Earth, wind, fire. This oh, yeah. is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what, but what distinguishes this film to, from Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and it, it will uh, take go to great pains to explain this to you, oh. is in this movie, uh, once you are taken over by the alien host, uh, you don't become just an emotionless uh, uh, thing. You actually become more emotional. I don't know what the hell they, they were Angrier? doing. There. They were no, better. The nineties were. They were better at becoming the opposite of themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah because that's the the really asshole coach was all of a sudden nicer, whereas like the really nice biology teacher was all of a sudden an asshole. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. kind of flip flop. Yeah, yeah, the kind of introverted yeah. uh, right. teacher becomes the, the extroverted pot, teacher. Right. teacher. I, and they the went frumpy <laughs> older teacher like all of a sudden does a makeover and she's you know the <laughs> Piper Laurie character. Right. Yeah. yeah. A crazy cast in this movie. Sorry, it really does. Well, I was gonna say they went to so much trouble before kind of the entire switch happened with everybody they go to so much trouble to show this movie feels like it's about extremes to me they show the extremes of these characters one way at the beginning of the movie just so that you know they've been taken over exactly that they show the ex- the exact opposite extremes of these characters exactly. later on once they've been taken over like I think it's it's extreme one way and ex- extreme the other yep. just so they're really trying to push that the people are changing mm-hmm. in this movie and I think that's you see the, that that's the key thing. I they're think so changing. they're changing and yeah. they, they go to, exposed right. to something and it has changed you into this insidious uh, yes. thing which basically yeah. wants to recruit other uh, people to its agenda. Yeah. The timid um, teacher becomes all, all of a sudden, you know, forward. The asshole teacher is still, he's still an asshole, but he's a sexual assault asshole at a certain point. Like, that's Robert Patrick, which is probably Have you seen from this Harvey. boy? Yeah. Oh, jeez. It's <laughs> weird that, like, We're just in my memory political. of this movie, yeah. just uh, get there, man. <laughs> Robert Patrick is, like, one of the people I remember the most. Like, I haven't yeah. seen this movie yeah, since he, he, the he was far scarier in T2, let's be honest. Yeah, but He's I mean, far I more remember, frightening in T2. Like, when you think of Robert Patrick roles, I think of, like, uh, T2, the, the faculty. And, 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 and X-Files. Really it's a big and one X-Files. for me. Oh, and X-Files. Oh, X-Files. Sorry. X-Files. Yeah, He's Doggett. great in X-Files. Yeah, Agent yeah. Doggett. Yeah, what else? And, well, obviously, if you watch CBS now, which who does? Fuck that uh, station. <laughs> Did they kill one of your favorite shows recently? In no, the he's TV in like apocalypse? he's in like Scorpion, which is like the CBS yeah. like well, a team back, gets together. Yeah, he, and he plays kind of like the Hannibal of the and group. Back to, I think, uh, back, yeah, of back the, to of the, the nerd eighteen. Joaquin yeah. Phoenix connection. He plays uh, Johnny Cash's dad in Walk the Line. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Wow. What yeah. a tingled yeah. Robert that Patrick's yeah. a, like a dependable guy. And he's yeah. Yeah. Good, and, and and now he's like so. the grizzled older yes. dude now. But yeah. yeah and, and he's I think he's I think he's far better now. Because I mean, but that might be what he had to deal with. Maybe. Because he, didn't, I mean, he was he very one dimensional for then, like the first ten years of his career, and probably you know he did good at the one dimensional though. Oh yeah, yeah, I, mean, I love I mean, him if in T two. I think he's great. T two. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, John Stewart also pops John up. Stewart. Yes, as, yes. As professor. Yes. When Edward he wanted to be an Furlong. actor <laughs> it, instead it, of what? a comedian, he's, he's and... Professor Edward Furlong. I know they said Professor Furlong. He's, he's Professor Edward, Edward Furlong. Furlong. There's yes, another T2 amazing. connection. There you go. He's Look at that, Edward Eddie Furlong. Furlong. That's amazing. That's that's that is amazing. Wonderful. Wow. But, you know he does. He does. He's John Stewart in this movie. What was he's Eddie great. Furlong actually doing that he couldn't oh, take drugs, the role? Drugs. Drugs. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. just doing drugs. <laughs> that's when what he's doing. Uh, when did the Daily Show start? So John Stewart had a career yeah. as a Early film on. actor. I mean, this may have been early. Was he a stand-up guy? Oh yeah, he did stand-up. Was this before or after he did like the Pot movie? He did the pop movie where he was jumping over the the, the parking uh, meters. I oh, I don't know. Um, I think he, that, he tried to be an actor baked? for well, half baked. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. He wasn't half baked. Yeah. Know, and yeah, the, well, then he did a he did like some Adam Sandler movies. He was in like fucking Big Daddy and stuff like that. He was. Oh, that's yeah. Very, I forgot about yeah. Big Daddy. I think mm-hmm. he was. Uh, he uh, did, this was during the Daily Show. Daily I was show, say, I think this was like he early started Daily, Daily show. show very early on. So I'm yeah. pretty sure this is like Daily Show. Like we'll get you in some movies, and they put him in stuff like this. Actually, you know what? He started in the Daily Show in '99. Nine. Oh, did he? Okay. Daily Show started in '96 with Craig Kilborn. Craig Kilborn, yeah. I believe, oh, before okay. he got his own okay. show at, uh, after David Letterman. Well, he did, yeah, late, late. Um, but yeah, so there's okay. Yeah, yeah so, so this, this would be him. when he was trying to be an actor instead right. of, but a, it's still kind of a stand-up a, at this point. A daily he, show, yeah. a comedian. Sidebar of any yeah. seen is the movie you directed. Oh, what Rosewater. Movie? Is Rosewater? It? Rosewater, I yeah. Not. I have not seen it. Uh-huh. Okay. I hear it's really good. But yeah, really? it's really good, yeah. too. And I've seen a lot of the trailers. I'm just like, that looks interesting. Okay. But yeah. it's also, it's like a political movie. And oh, okay, so you have yeah. to be in like, 
you know, it's not going to be the most fun time of your life. You have to kind right. of be in a mood to go watch it. So yeah, I haven't seen gone, it yet. He's gone serious, uh, you know. But I mean, if, I think he's, to do I one think he's movie, amazing. I really do. Well, I mean, he's, I love yeah, seen the film. I, I think love we all John love John Stewart. Stewart. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I like what he did in the Daily Show. I like what he's done. Afterwards. I loved the Daily the, Show. I yeah. loved it. I think it's. I think it was far better with him as the host. Larry Sanders Absolutely. Show. Before this, Larry Sanders, he was what amazing. You, what do you do on Larry Sanders? He, he, he was You should all watch John Larry Stewart. Sanders. You should all watch Larry Sanders <laughs> just saying, but... Yes. Well, John Stewart in this film plays basically the biology professor... Or professor the professor. He's a cool from, teacher. Uh, right, Gremlins, yeah. he, who has to explain yes. to his students, hey, you found this alien organism, and here's how it works. He's just not the cool black guy. Well, he, well, he's, he's, he's actually, I mean, he, he's a, he basically the same guy that the, the, the science teacher is in Stranger Things now. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, that's he's exactly that he science is. teacher. Yeah. But cooler. But cooler. But, but far fucking cooler. Yeah. yeah. He's fucking a nerd. And but. more attractive. Sorry, well, but he is. <laughs> these people are all at this uh, high school, which name I can't remember. It's in Ohio. Oh, no, no. It's the Herring Hornets. Harrington. Harrington, the Harrington the Hornets. Harrington. Right. I, I don't know if there's like a red herring motif there. Very good. But... The thing that we all remarked on when we were watching this was the idea that, like, uh, the the opening of the movie, and maybe this is intentional based on where the movie goes, sets up the most one of the most hostile fucking school environments. Yes. Yeah, the kids are evil. <laughs> so angry. Everyone's Every, so angry. It's just like. But this is what I was talking about. No wonder the faculty wants to kill them. This is These what, kids are evil. Wait, have you what, seen the class of 1999? Maybe we need to add that to the list of influences oh, on this yeah, movie. Yeah. Where the, fa- that, okay. the faculty yeah. actually also, does. Also, wasn't that the name of the band who did the uh, Brick in the Wall Part 2 cover? Mm, yes, that was class, class of 1999. Yeah, that was the band. Holy yeah. shit, we're connection. bringing it all back again. <laughs> but I think they went, I think uh, it feels like it was done on purpose. Um uh, showing all that because again they're trying to show the extremes. Yeah, right. they're setting up all yeah. these extremes to show the opposites later on when everyone gets infected and everything. Because yeah. then, then they're wandering through the halls, going something's going on because yeah. everybody's not fucking. She's not at slapping each other. the shit out of him anymore. Yeah. What's yeah. going on with those two? But the yeah, impression yeah. of it is we're like, not beating kids as soon as they get off the bus, right? Because exactly. we banded Nuts together to defeat the aliens. But do I you mean, find like '90s era movies have you know maybe it's more 2000 era movies? Have that kind of like nasty attitude. Whenever you have kids in a movie, or high school era kids, they are like the nastiest fucking pieces of work to each other. Yeah. I think there's a difference between the nastiness. I understand what you're saying, and I think it's more. I don't like the nastiness of the later years. I think the nastiness mm-hmm. of the '90s isn't as uh, doesn't turn me off as much. I don't know. I don't know what the. I don't know what they're the difference evil is. to each other. They're evil, but they're it's pretty feels, mean. I mean, they, it feels more like, cartoon, like it feels a, more cartoony evil. I don't yeah. know what that means. Well, that's, I, I, that's the thing. They, guess, they really they really hit harder on the stereotypes in the nineties. I think so. they have very specific and, stereotypes that are very like hostile towards each other. Yeah. What would it yeah. seemed like? What would seem like almost like Family Guy satire now? I think was almost attempted as satire then, but just we maybe weren't in on the joke. I, I feel like when, when they like when the two girls get out of the car to beat each other up because they got in a fender bender. <laughs> That's wonderful. I think that was almost supposed to be like almost parody. See, no, that part, it failed yeah. miserably I, because I we agree. thought it was supposed to be a serious well, movie. I, I, well, I agree that that part was supposed to be funny. That's parody now. Like, well, if you, if to do something like that now, like you said, Family Guy, I think that's where we find it funny. I think it was maybe too much. Yeah. But, well, then, but you think like, it was, was parody almost, then? No, I, 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 think right. it was, I think the writers probably thought it was. That's what I think. Right. They I think thought the writers it was. thought that would be hilarious. Yes. But the kids didn't get it. Right. See, I thought that part was funny, but I didn't find it funny when the next shot was them take like four guys taking Elijah Wood and literally shoving him into a flagpole. Right. Crotch Balls first. first. Yeah. But that's, that's not but, funny. No, but it was, I think it was. What they thought would be considered funny to general audiences you think at so? that time. I think so. I think that was the time of big... 1998, when was American Pie? Because I think it was the time of, like, broad... It's not like American Pie something. humor. No, but I think it's a time of, like, broad... <laughs> Um, broad jokes. Well, who are you supposed to be identifying with? In the uh, you know, the nineties like, were all extreme. But when you're well, watching, so. the girls, yeah, I mean, you look at Baz Luhrmann in the nineties. I mean, he's still kind of extreme, it, but, but it's like that's what they were trying if you to don't. Go for. I mean, well, when you're watching the pun, those hit girls, some guy in the head with your crotch, you weren't really trying that hard as a director. I mean, it, it seemed like they were trying to hit people over the head with a lot in the nineties, yeah. and that was a lot of nineties movies. I mean, you, it was it was almost explicit in its visual style. It's like you have. 
have to understand this about this character. Yeah. And well, is there well, a montage that's, that's about the this thing. character? Like, this, kid, this kid's a fucking nerd, and yeah, so he gets his ball get smashed into the thing. Yeah. Why, why really do they think big and broad that, with yeah. those things? Why do they think you're not smart enough to un, to, to to get understatement? You know, well, the there, 90s there is. Are not, I was going to say that was, that's also a trend in the nineties. That is not yeah. very understated. Yeah, yeah. And it, it yeah. Wasn't exactly. like exactly. girls. That here's what it is. Changing a little bit. And then here's what it is again explained. And then like here's what it like blatantly yeah. what we are talking about. Yeah. Like that's the thing too. Like you know the idea that you, you can't actually have like a metaphor in a movie anymore. <laughs> you have to actually explain what it is in the movie yeah. as you're yeah. going. Like here's if, the lesson you should have learned. Yeah. Right. Did you get this? This is what I mean right now. I have a little tangent less i i think that kind of goes back to the music there's no such thing as explicit music i mean it's so obvious what they're trying to say it's like it, it, maybe i'm maybe i'm the, the old grumpy old man get off my lawn well, when i say this but but it seems like you know it's like <laughs> you know no okay. you know, <laughs> years ago, give it a couple like, years yeah you'll yeah. Well, yeah. some time together get now off it's like my uh, lawn. i'm pretty cheerful you know, <laughs> Yeah, it's like I don't know. It's, it seems like if it's not explicit, they don't get it. And and I think kids are smarter than that if we yeah. just let them and we just they'll figure it out. We're definitely not letting them in the nineties. No, no. And, we, and, and in some yeah, respects, I, I don't think they are why, even now, but they I will. Mean, I think that's why like our films seem, especially when you uh, when they export them to the rest of the world, they have to be. I mean, you're playing to the lowest common denominator. There like, is everybody that. can understand this because it is spelled out in explicit detail to yes. you, mm-hmm. and it's not, uh, you know, like when you watch films from the rest of the world, they are more keen on, you know, it's like, well, it's assumed that you know this is what we're talking about. We don't actually have to. You have to keep up with it, and I think that encourages. I fucking watched a GI Joe cartoon. The old like a real American hero yeah. GI Joe, and they were using words in that fucking show that I'm like, no kid at like whatever four <laughs> yeah. years old yeah. will have any idea. Were you what watching the an hell? episode or GI Joe the movie? It was an episode. Okay, no, no. And, but I just remember thinking yeah. to myself, it's like. There's no way that like I would not have known what the hell that word was at that time, and they keep talking that way. Yeah. But I think that encourages you as a viewer yeah. to find out what the hell it means. Yeah. Right now, it's like they go like whoa, whoa, whoa. SpongeBob. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, uh, the opposite. Of yeah. This. Well, like, there's still certain things, and I can't think of a specific, a specific example, but there's still certain things where I have to like stop. He's like, "What does that word mean?" Like it's and it, it's more complex things, or I'm just like, "Well, it means this, this, and this," and you know, we go on from there. It still happens, not as much, I don't think, where they just wrote it for. I don't know what the, who they were writing GI Joe for, but <laughs> right? I can't tell, but I, I, mean, I really, for, yeah, who were they for, Joe for? Well, I mean, I guess like what? Uh, let's say eight to twelve. I guess so. Right? Just who like, plays with action figures? I don't know. I watch. I, I mean, lot. everyone does. Yeah, so, I mean, like, well, you're they, younger I think than they were I loved the it entire back in the audience, day. and they were just like, "Well, you'll explain to someone if you need to." Yeah. So the faculty. The faculty. Mm. Yeah, but we should well, talk we a lot of tangents. We should tonight. talk about this movie <laughs> at some point. Yeah. Well, we've kind of covered some of the people that are there's a galaxy of people. Baby Newworth is. is in it. Uh Bibi. Piper Laurie. Bibi. 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 Who, who, who still the- looks Bibi. exactly Bibi. like Bibi. she does Bibi. in 1998. <laughs> I mean, it's 20 years later, and she Fuck, still looks like years. she does. Well, she's the most attractive principal I think that a high school has ever had. Am I wrong? She dresses well. Oh, we're talking about. Lilith from Frasier? Yeah. Yes. yes, we are. Where she was yes. not Lilith from Frasier. She was Lilith something. from Cheers. That's like, like, I'm sorry. That's better, yes, yeah. back way. I'm sorry. Cheers was a little before my time. Oh, that's very true. <laughs> but that's when Lilith was, you know, no, I don't know. She was that, when, when, still was happening. She, she abandoned a career on, on television yeah. to be a dancer was, on Broadway. As, uh, well, that's when Lilith was, and to quote Colin, hot and doing it. And that's, <laughs> that's a deep cut to a previous episode. <laughs> hot and doing it. When you were hot and doing it. Hot and doing it. <laughs> There's an implied like for me in there, right? Did I just do what I uh, accused the movies yes, of doing? You did. A yeah, I mean yeah. maybe. Uh, okay, so um, so basically, well, let's talk about these aliens, right? All okay, because right. all these sci-fi movies because we know they're aliens, which are kind of like slugs within the first like kind of parasitic slug within things. the setup. Like they're not trying to hide anything from us. We know they're aliens. We know the school is being taken over by aliens. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <sighs> Compare I- it to Invasion of the Body Snatchers. You knew that they were aliens in that, yeah, because the title of the movie. Mm. I think, uh, I mean, 
I, I think it works better for our cast at this point. I don't know, because they're trying to figure out... It's not that they are aliens, but how to, de- to defeat the aliens, I think. I yeah, don't know. But as Does Chris pointed out while we were watching the movie, it ends up... The, the movie is explaining shit to you. At some point, they have to that sit the cast know? down and explain to them what we already know. Right. Mm-hmm. Th- that's very bothersome. Right. We should be... If nothing else, the baseline should be that we're learning things at the same time. Not that we're learning something that, not that the cast is learning something that we already know. That doesn't help. Yeah, we, we spend like what eight minutes because we're like, like we talking know, about we exactly this. what yeah. we already have found if out throughout the, the, the story. The baseline should be learning things at the same time. Right. Not the audience to be ahead of you. Um, that does. I'm not saying that doesn't. That works for movies. Mm-hmm. Like for right. the audience, obviously, for the audience to know something before the uh, characters in your story to do it. Well, that dramatic builds, irony is one thing, but, but yeah, but but. Getting the solution point, is movie, different than dramatic like, irony. It's like, oh, but, now I get it. That's different than I don't personally being in on the joke. It may be that I've lived with this movie for twenty years and know it uh, intimately. That Do you I watch don't this mind. often. Sean? I I could have been quoting this movie the entire time okay. throughout <laughs> this uh, as we go through this. Um, Who's your favorite character? Is it uh, what you're talking about? You're talking about Zeke, Stan? No, Stokely? I was just curious. Just like, Yours? Uh, which one out of this whole thing? Uh, I mean, I like uh, I like Zeke. Okay, Zeke is uh, Josh, Josh Hartnett, Hartnett, yes. Which I don't think, yeah, we did mention. Okay, so he, well, who is his What was up Zeke? with his hair? In his oh, head? my God. No, no, that's Josh Hartnett oh hair that he had on the series for, like, the first 10 years <laughs> oh. of his career. It's, he took, like, he went into a barber well, and said, okay, okay. Did he have a career it. that lasted longer than 10 years? <laughs> He's still going. Oh, he okay, okay. Going. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Penny he, Dreadful. Penny he Dreadful. dreadful. Oh. Yeah, that's oh, right. I did not know that. I yeah. apologize. He was in, He did Robert Rodriguez later. Sin City. He did. Right. I mean, that's yeah, a while that was, ago. That was still, still within that ten year window. I think. Yeah. Right. Because well, Brian De Palma's yeah. The Black Dahlia was later Black after Dahlia? that ten years. Are we probably. all forgetting Hollywood Homicide with Harrison Ford? I yes. think yes, we are. Yes, we are. I think yes, we are. We've all forgotten that. <laughs> that was a theatrical I think Harrison Ford is forgetting that movie. And who could forget Sean's favorite Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor. I will. I'm not going to defend the movie. I'm just going to say I like the movie. I know. I'm not going to sit here and defend it because. I'm not gonna, that's that's it is wasted. Michael Bay that is wasted energy, folks. But I will say I like it, so yeah. y'all can deal with own that. it, man. Just own it. That's I awesome. like it. That's I'll great. watch it again. I'll take that double VHS what? thing and fucking. Oh yeah, like Titanic. It came on two VHSs. It was a long fucking movie, Colin. So you're saying you've never upgraded? Do you love it? That no, much? it's all right. I had the soundtrack. Let's see, there you go. It's I got did. Jennifer Garner in it. It's got Ben Affleck. It's got a bunch of people. It got Kate well, Beckinsale. Speaking of soundtracks, Kate. Be- you, you can't not yeah, no, appreciate a movie with Kate Beckinsale. I cannot, I cannot, I have I cannot all the appreciate the zero chemistry between Kate Beckinsale and her two male co-stars. That's well. Yeah, let, that's but let's give her some credit chemistry. here. Look at her two girl. Look at her two male co-stars. I, don't, I, I blame. I blame all three of them. I blame all fucking three of them. They're all to blame. No chemistry. Unless they're flying planes and they're fucking uh, awesome, and I love them. All right, I want to bring it back real quick to soundtracks as our segue to the soundtrack to this movie. Because this is a 90s movie. This is a A lot of remakes. Wonderfully 90s soundtrack. A lot of covers, yeah, yeah. Oh, Oh, it's wonderful. So, who do we have on here? What are we listening to? Uh, 90s bands like uh, uh, Creed. We had Creed, Creed. Garbage. We had Oasis. 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 Was Was it Gin Blossoms? No. no. The Offspring. No. Is it The Offspring? I think Soul Asylum. Soul, Soul Asylum. Asylum. That's right. it. Soul Asylum. Offspring started yeah. the movie. Offspring. And you know you're in a rebellious high school when the movie starts off with Offspring. That's very true. Yes. And, and, I was and all that, for that made me chuckle. Oh, my it's like, if that's as edgy as this school really is. I was all for it. That Come was, on. Uh, but that was my high school. Not very edgy. Uh, yeah. I, when I think of like <laughs> what we have now for subversion, sure. and I think of Offspring, I'm like, wow, these guys like, are, are very PG-13. Are yeah. they putting... Okay. Well, this is my... like. Uh, I'm I'm having some kind of cultural blindness now because I am aware that movies use a lot of music as score. I'm looking at Suicide Squad or Guardians of the Galaxy, whereas a lot of like retro music, but you're not really like what movie is blasting you with the tunes of you know like 2018 I think as the, the the wallpaper to the music. The I movie. think you're blind to the 90s. I think you. No, no. I mean, right now, I'm saying, well, is it well, happening right now? You go to a movie and you're like, I want to well, buy that because okay, it's got but, all these but here's like, the thing, though, 2018 uh, uh, artists. Here's on the it. thing: how many teen movies do you watch right now? Mm. Because that's a big part of it. This so is a teen, movie. It's a teen movie, but if it's a teen horror movie, which I can't, I'm blanking again. Like, I mean, like what? Happy Death Day. I mean, I don't, you know, uh, even uh, that doesn't feel like a teen horror movie. Well, 
It's what, a, it's, well, it's not. How about rings? It's not, okay, there's it, no well, music no, in there. It, uh, well, what I'm saying is, like, it's not a teen ensemble. It's not like Scream or even this movie because that's a teen yeah. ensemble movie. I'm, but you think of the teen ensemble movie, and I think of it, which had retro like, eighty because it was set in the eighties. Music in it, yeah, but that's the trend right now. Stranger Things had retro also, 80s stuff, right? In but it. that's but that's also something you know the eighties. I I'm, I think there's a nineties blind spot for you. But is, but I guess my question is like, was the night? It seemed like the nineties was the era that did this the most, where it would put like we the have all these soundtrack did, promotion was the two thousands yeah. did it a lot. The two thousands did it. Okay, a lot. but are they doing yeah. it now? Are you are you hearing? Are you, are you watching somewhat? a movie and going like? That song is awesome. I want to buy that album because I heard it in a movie. I don't think so. But again, like it me. could be happening in teen movies because I don't watch those. But I don't think it's happening as much, no. Personally. It feels like I would still... This is why I'm just... I'm. You know, it's like teen movies, yes, but teen genre movies like The Faculty, yeah. I would still probably be watching. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, trying to come up mm-hmm. with a modern film that has a I, modern, you know, artist. But I don't right. think they're doing. So, that. I, I think, I think they're. I, I, I credit to, I guess, our teenagers. I think there is a bit of cynicism in some of that marketing now. Where where kids just don't buy it, right? They're they're literally like, oh, and they're, figuratively, they're they don't believe to market it. To me, they're, they're, like, yeah, no. and they're like, no, I'm not going to buy that so album. So we're just going to keep movie. hitting the nostalgia button. It's all going to be I, well. I watched, but who uh, buys the nostalgia? It's us. Yeah, I watched it's us. Cobra Guardians Kai. of the Galaxy soundtrack. We'll buy that. Have you, have you seen Cobra buy. Kai? The, the <laughs> no, I haven't. I heard it's great, awesome, but it's all full of like '80s, you know, soundtrack. I mean, Stranger Things. Have you started watching it? It's it's better than I thought it was going to be. Because I, I want to watch it. hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes right now. hundred percent. I went into it going like, this is a joke, right? Yeah, and then I'm you watch the first it. episode and I'm like, I got to watch the next one. And by the end of it, it was like, this is actually, I mean, yeah. it was a nostalgia blast. I'm yeah. all for it. I want to yeah. watch it. I'm you so excited. I'm down yeah. for it. If you like Karate Kid. I do love Karate Kid. Cobra Kai Day. Exactly. Sunday. Cobra Kai Day. I like all Karate Kid. Yeah. And you will love Cobra Kai. All right. I'm all, all in. I'm tomorrow's I'm in. Cobra Kai Day. Yeah. And there's I'm a in. season two coming. Um, uh, that's what I hear. Okay, so there's aliens that uh, live in the back water. Of the faculty. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, I think I think our impression of this movie is, 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 is subtly but influencing is, our conversation because none of us want to talk it. about the faculty. Well, I, it may not even be that we don't want to talk about it. It's what the uh, what the faculty it's what invokes. It it's what it's it what it brings up and what it represents. It was such a it's a, it's almost like a touchstone of its time. Are yeah. you saying it's a classic of 1998 cinema? That I'm not going to express those views and until my wrap up okay. but maybe so stay Colin. tuned listener <laughs> <laughs> but I think it does bring up things that you're just like ah yeah. at least for me yeah it's like well a, that would make like sense called at your age it is, and I like <laughs> that I think but I think you know what I think if you label something nostalgia I think even that at this point is starting to get a bad rap because people look at something you label nostalgia and they're just like ah and they dismiss it if that's what you label it as, if that's what something you're watching is giving you and you label it nostalgia, people are just like, eh, all right, fine. They don't give it credence, I guess, at this point. Mm-hmm. They don't give it any, you know, any weight to well, it if you just label yeah, it as I think that. It's a thing of like, you know, does a modern viewer watch a movie from 1998, mm-hmm. a kid who's 18 right now, Oof. watch a 1998 movie and are they able to experience it as like it's a good movie or they're like you think it's a good movie because it's colored by your nostalgia sure. i had this experience last week apparently <laughs> yeah, what was did. that movie rambo, rambo 3, 3 which i was like this is a great fucking action no. movie it's stupid <laughs> yes it stupid. but it is like action packed and they watched it and were like asleep <laughs> it was like crickets <laughs> yeah. yeah it was amazing yeah. i'm like i remember loving that movie as a kid because it's that was like in that American Ninja vein for me, the, which I is another movie that Rambo deserves 3. to be on the fucking Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> American Ninja, we should give that one to Michaela in her Summer of Canon that's coming up. But uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder if that's the thing. It's like you know, it's like can you you know are it's like. Well, I mean, a lot of the movies that we talk about on this show are like either they're colored by nostalgia by the time that we're, sure. the age that you were when you first saw it. Or does it hold up, you know, when you watch it right now mm-hmm. and like coming into it cold, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. This is, uh, I will say, this is the one benefit of having a child 
because it's uh, 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 it's a lifelong experimentation on a human being as, <laughs> as far as like showing them things that that uh, you viewed as a, a younger person or throughout your life and seeing how they react to it because uh, this is a movie like how old 1998 20 years I, well, I was 12 when this came out, and I probably saw it probably soon after that. I guarantee so this would be it. an awesome movie for a 12-year-old well, because they swore in it. There's, like, nudity. Right. There's, like, violence. And that's there's, what, like, screw like, the teachers. And Let's that's kill them. Right. And he'll be right in the middle of that. So that's how I gauge, like, when to show it to them. And so, like, you got to... That's the wonderful thing about children. You can show them these things and be like, well, what did you think about it? Is like, do they have the same reaction? Do they think the same things? Is everything they've experienced before this influencing? Because we have fucking phones and iPads and everything like that. Are they going to be the, none of that technology yeah, comes through in this movie? It's, it's very subversive yeah. what, what for is a 12 year old, but what it's is his life that he's experienced in school and everything? Yeah. How does that influence how he's viewing this movie now? Let me ask you something. This is going way the fuck oh, fine. off Go for the, it. the beaten path. Reservation? Like, yeah, we're gone. Have, I mean, have you ever considered that maybe that we're fucking up the next generation of kids by Completely. showing them, like, uh, because... Completely. Like, this is why we, we have came Stranger up going Things. like... Yeah, exactly. This is why we have Stranger Things. Exactly, yeah. because it's yeah. like they're yeah. stuck in the 80s guaranteed, because yeah. their parents are showing them yeah. 80 shit, and that's why you got Ready Player One and all this Yeah, oh, guaranteed. This because is, they don't yeah. have a, a thing they of their, their own. own. They yeah. don't. It, it, no, it's, it's all postmodern. All, yeah, and it that's is. Sad. It really is. It really is. They're not yeah. discovered. There's no discovery of their that's own because things. because we never, that's why this, it's almost like can't grow up. We are consistently clinging to these things that were like, they were awesome back then. And now we will show them to you. And we're going to show them I'm going to make you play Mario. And, and not only that, we're going to show them to awesome. you, and then we're going to remake it four times. Yeah, oh, until no, it's good again. Them all up. Yeah, they will not have. They, there's no. Well, there's, we're destroying pop culture. I suppose. I think so. There's no discovery of their own. There's yeah. things being shown to them. That is where well, children they've got are their at. YouTube uh, stars uh, and oh, those are big, no, no, no. Well, I they, agree. There are it things is, that are I, that are theirs. It's fucking weird and, and disgusting. It, like the, the YouTube whole thing. It's I don't agree with it. And I think it's unnatural. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking weird. There, there are things but that are, are are fucking them. It up for them. Yeah, there are things that are theirs. And and this is the grumpy old man. They don't make sense on me. I mean that. Like yeah. uh, the, 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 my students show me things. That, like they showed me a, a video from Japan. Uh, a, a guy singing a song about a pineapple and a pen. Oh yeah, the yeah. Japanese yeah. pineapple, pineapple, pineapple pen. That's fucking hilarious. And, and, and it's pretty absurd, ridiculously. <laughs> this is my, yeah, this is my pineapple. It's, you, my get pineapple. It, you get it. You get it. It made no sense. It's funny. So it's a. It's Colin. An, it's an absurdist. It was, it was like uh, they're going to be showing their kids this. Uh, I think Gangnam absurdist style. works on him. Gangnam style. You know, it's like it's like that. It, and you find it funny. You know what yeah. this is? This is the fucking office episode with Jim and the meatball. <laughs> Remember Stanley and the meatballs. No, oh, no. Do you remember what this? season is this? Oh, it was like season eight. Or All right, no, yeah. I, no. I have no I knew reference. It. For I know we can't he get did. through one fucking episode, Chris. <laughs> That's why I'm glad you're here. Uh, I, I'm a, uh, I'm sorry if the you're office a, is a, the best. an office fan, but I can't get through. I've never seen a fucking episode. <laughs> I've seen one episode, episode of the Office. Of this oh my show, god! I've seen some gifts since right. then, or some every gifs, episode of the show. I'm say. like, huh? Because they're always like, oh, that's like that episode of the Office. It's every, so relatable, Colin. It's so relatable. Yeah, I'm I'm so out of the office. I, I watched the British version I mean, before good. it came out in America. That's good. So I knew they that John Krasinski like was going to get together with that one girl but that was before the show came on. But that whoa, was about whoa, it. spoilers. Spoilers. Yes. Uh, Jim, I, I don't know. Jim, yep. and, Jim and Pam is not a spoiler. Sorry. It's not. <laughs> yeah, Everyone, just knows that. The office, Everyone knows that. So the faculty. For the fact. Oh, the I'm sorry. We should bring movie, it back, which we've barely talked. We've barely talked. Oh my gosh! It. So let's talk about our hero protagonist, main character Zeke. Is he? Is he? Is he the main character? Or is it Elijah? It, I thought it was is Elijah it, Wood. I think it's Elijah is it Frodo? Wood. He literally saves Wood. Frodo the day. Frodo of the Shire. He's, yeah, he saves okay. the day. He's this the protagonist. The All right, so here's a good point for discussion then, because for some reason it feels to me that they're setting up that Zeke is the uh, prior to the fact that Frodo saves the day. Spoiler. Well, you knew you were getting into that, but. Zeke is set up as the uh, main protagonist. Is, am up, I wrong? That they're setting in up this ensemble. It's a like he few seems strong to strong characters. Yeah, yes. they're, they're setting up a few. The strong yeah, characters they're, they're, that are being set up. Yeah, it, it, this seemed like the kind of horror movie where you're not waiting to see who's going to die next and survive. You're just trying to pick out like 
who's going to kill the the bad guy. Right, who's leading end. us to the end? Yeah, it, it seemed more like because about halfway through the movie, that's one of the things that I thought. I was like, when are these people going to start dying? Yeah. yeah, you know, I'm like, well, none of nobody's died you, yet. It's I, surprising I, because that you don't die. It's supposed to be a horror movie, over. and no one's died. But they you get taken over, over yeah. so you're not like, there anymore. Your soul isn't there. Yeah, anymore. I get it. I get it. But you lost, right? Yeah. But not a lot of them. Like, it none, isn't, of, none of the kids got right. their body it isn't like snatched, a screen if you will. Where you have your your main cast of characters and they start dying off. Yeah, like, that really doesn't happen. Like, you know, like we said, Stan gets killed, like taken over, but they don't just keep dying off. No, we don't know when. We don't know when the Joanna Brewster character gets taken, taken over. Taken directly but. from the 1970s when he's at the window and yeah. he's like, "It's direct. It's that's what Leonard Nimoy says yeah. to fucking Donald Sutherland in the 1978 yeah. Invasion of the Body Snatchers." It's shameless. They have it's a shameless. scene that we were talking about the, the thing 90s earlier. Were shameless. We're talking about the thing earlier yeah. that as a, an influence of this movie. There's a scene where they have to determine which one of them. Is or is not the alien? Yeah, they do the blood test. They do the blood test. And Only they, they, they don't snort caffeine. In this version, they do. Well, there's another callback to the thing, which is the head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a head of a. Yeah, Tomka Johnson's head crawling around. Which you got to be fucking kidding. Well, that would have been a no. better line. That's from the thing, and then this and one he's he says, like, "Fuck this, I'm out of here." Yeah, 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 not as good. Not as no, no, not as good. Not obviously, as good. Not yeah, as not good. as good. So it's like when you're doing your homage to a movie that you know, obviously you respect and admire. It's like I get that, but like, don't you have? Isn't it? I think part of the bargain is if mm-hmm. you're going to do this, you have to do it better than they did it, right? In order to be successful, it's like sure, yeah. that's the goal. And if you should if be. you don't do it as good, then what does that mean? That you're just ripping it off. It, so yeah, I guess yeah. that's what I'm going for. It's well, like no, yeah, scenes feel like ripoffs from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, it definitely is. Yeah, the, the the B movie version of those B movies, which, is, which <laughs> makes it those a, other B. I, I don't want to wrap it up too quickly. Like B minus movies. Up, but, there, yeah. Like, yeah. Like yeah. What does that equal? A B on a B? Was that a D? I don't know. Oh, I think it's like B minus. B minus? Maybe C, maybe a B plus a B. Maybe this is a good point to go to. <laughs> I don't know number or uh, letter math. Before we, we go to the wrap ups and we actually tell, give you our reviews where we will break down the fucking faculty. Are you ending this? Holly, do we right have now? anything? Do you have anything that you want to add before we go to wrap ups? How did, what, uh, we, a, a, about the faculty? About the faculty. Is there I anything mean, we missed? We missed a lot. We haven't, I mean, even, we, we haven't even talked about this movie. I was like, did we even really talk about it? I mean, no. we, there was characters we never even mentioned. We didn't mention uh, Clea Duvall or Clea Usher. Duvall, or, yeah. or well, the, Usher, Usher, Usher really didn't Usher have Usher a character with, with, with the last the name. I mean, I mean, if we want to Usher talk about Clea name. Duvall and Usher, then I'd like to talk about She's All That, and we could go off on another tangent. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> She's All That is is one of my secret favorites. It's I one love of the best She's All That. I don't think it needs to be ever. a secret, man. Just fly Just that flag. It. It's the best. Rachel Lee Cook. Wow. Everyone, I love Rachel Lee Cook. I love She's All That. I think cheerleaders in that movie. Have I seen this? And She's All That? I mean, it's a high school movie, so of course there's a cheerleader at some but point. Oh, no, what am I bring it on? No, the, the bring main... it on. Damn it. Okay. Yeah, sorry. No, she's all that. The, the, uh... Bring it on's a fucking classic, by the way. Bring it on is great. <laughs> Just saying. I watch because it all the time. Uh, Faith is in it and she's Eliza Dushku. Love Faith, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because she's so morose and angel, but and Buffy's but she's very. But she's very peppy in uh, Bring It On. That's very true. She's not, though. She's a goth girl. They she didn't have ju- They didn't have a gymnastics team, so she tried out for cheerleading. Right. Did you see the movie, Colin? Yeah, but she smiled. She smiled, Holly. She doesn't she smile also, an she angel. Smiled. She, also, she, also she had a, fake smiled. She a tattoo that she rubbed off. Right. Forbidden. I know too much about this movie. I love All right, bring it on. so I also do. Why don't we? Bring... Are we? Are we done? Are we? Are we done yeah. talking no, about? No, 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 we're not. We, we because... can't be done talking about the faculty. Well, Colin. We can't go on forever. Because we, 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 we haven't we mentioned. Can. We haven't mentioned Shooter McGavin. How many? How many? Is he even mentioned? Mentioned? Shooter McGavin. Shooter McGavin. Donald. McGavin. And you're trying to wrap Come up this show, on. Colin. This is gonna be a slightly longer show. <laughs> I have a feeling. <laughs> don't try and wrap us up or We have to get through this. We haven't even gone. Through like Happy Gilmore's nemesis is in this movie, but why is we Colin, haven't even Colin, mentioned it? Colin, yet. why and he's is he not in even a movie? bad guy? Why is he in this movie? He's Colin? like what the year was Happy Gilmore. Well, Christopher like McDonald's been in like a whole bunch of movies, yeah, right? He was Goose and Grease, and too. then somebody, Come somebody, on. he was in Breaking. Somebody he was in Breaking. <laughs> yes. he was in Breaking. <laughs> so why Somebody are you actually surprised, does the Sean? Shooter McGavin the... shooting at Shooter McGavin. T one thousand does it. If that isn't yeah. postmodern, what is? That's totally nineties. Wait, we got to do that. 
Finger guns. There you go. Yeah, he's, yeah. somebody finger, did that. Finger guns <laughs> to finger guns. Shooter yeah. McGavin. It's finger pistols. No, finger, finger, pistols. Pistols. finger pistols. I mean, come on. What's if that wasn't, guns? that has to be a Robert Rodriguez no, thing. Like somebody, guns. finger pistols, finger, finger guns. guns. It's always been finger guns. Yeah. Damn it, for everyone, everywhere except for you. All right, wait, Thank all right, you. all right. I want to stop right now, and I'm very serious on this. It's finger oh, pistols. Oh, it's shit. finger guns. It's finger pistols. Listener, it's, you're so. I want. Wrong. Someone, I think we need a vote. So I, I want, want someone online to chime in this. Like, mean, this, this is why is, Facebook needs to bring back the polls, so we can actually like put up a poll. Is it finger pistols or finger guns? Finger guns. I'm going to go on every social media that I have and ask this question. It's I'm going to go on the, okay. the well, one that I have. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. If they were to go on social media to tell us whether it's finger guns or finger pistols, how would they get a hold of us on Facebook? He's still trying to end Facebook. the show. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. How would they get a hold of us on Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. How would they get a hold of us by email? Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And how would they get a hold of us by Instagram? At, at Saturday, it's Saturday, Night Saturday, Saturday Night Freak Show. Right. Don't end the the show, Colin. We haven't even discussed how this movie ends. Yeah, how does it end? How does it end? I'm dying to know. I am also dying to know. There and the was, only one who can take us there is there the narrator, another, Colin. There was another character. Does Frodo destroy the ring? Mention. How does what it what end? There was like, another character we didn't they, mention. They, the new girl. The new, the new oh, girl. The oh, new girl. And, and we didn't mention the Nev Campbell lookalike yet. Oh, yeah, Jordana, Jordana Brewster. Brewster. We have not talked about this movie, Colin. <laughs> and whose fault is that? That's not my fault, Sean. Maybe, maybe mine, but we've, we've had discussions about everything. You're just talking about characters now. It's about kids okay. who fight the aliens, and at the end of I mean, it, it really they, like, they do a blood test. I think we hit that. We haven't got the bar. Right, we got the blood test. test. Is it a blood test? And then it's, they it's have more well, like sorry, a, basically, it's more like yeah. a cocaine test. But sure. it's, right. Yeah, it's all. So they all have to do entire, drugs to prove they're the not aliens. The entire movie is an anti-drug campaign. No, it's, well, no, it's a pro drug. No, I think it's a pro drug campaign because they have to take the drug to prove they're not aliens. Because it's because basically to if you if you are a conformist, right, you become part of the the hive, and so you do drugs, and your mind is open, and you're able to see what's really happening, right? Which is an alien invasion in your small town. And so we get to like so what the ending is. We get to like they all go back to the high school because this is a big football game going on. This is a football town. That's the climax. That's the climax. Yes. So they all go back to the high school as it's abandoned because everyone's at the football game. You're talking about the very end? Or which part are you talking about? The very end. When they get to the end because the, they go to After the, they all like, get high, they go back to the football game. The, <laughs> yeah. After they all do drugs. <laughs> right. And they all decide, like, well, we got to figure that. Because they all figure they that. They have to kill the queen. How they figured well, that out, I have no idea. Well, yeah, that's, that's sure this is, they're all going on, like, the science fiction uh, novels. Like, they're going Invasion all, of the body snatchers. Right. They're all going on this logic. doesn't have a queen, right. but whatever. Right, right. But they're all going on this logic. They've all decided there needs to be a queen. Yep. Who, who presents the idea, I think, is, it's convenient. is the queen. Uh, I think in the movie presents this idea, perhaps, no, I can't uh, or at least, remember. or at least says that this is where we should go. There's a bunch you, you of think that the, you think the actual queen would be like, I don't think that's how it works. Well, I'm, but I think <laughs> you, well, you, you think that. But I mean, then someone mentions that, that like, people the, off the, the <laughs> right that the principal uh, maybe we just need to kill all of them individually, the guys. And they all get this in their head that BB New Earth, she's the principal, she's the queen, she's the head of everything. So, she's but we know, we know she's not the queen because Do, she um, wasn't. No, no, we, we knew because she was she killed by somebody else. Killed by somebody else at the beginning of the film. So we she knew that the Robert queen. Patrick. Was the the kids know assumed it because she was the principal. Right. This is and yeah, they're assuming it because she's the principal. She's we, the we obviously know that. Be. So they go to the school, the abandoned school, and they've this, well, which is the worst rundown school you've ever seen in your life. But I mean, I've this. been I've been in inner city school, but I like this for a long time. I like this school, the most disgusting school I've ever seen. I like that it's rundown. I also like. Like that they're uh, they've decided that the principal is the queen and they must kill her and the principal just shows up into the gym the abandoned gym that they're in looking for these students yes and the, the, you know everything kind of comes together for them just you know mm-hmm. as it does and mm-hmm. so they decide to <laughs> they decide they wrap her up into a volleyball net I think it is <laughs> at course. this point everything was high it's school like, right they also and give drove, her drugs and they, like, we they, have to they give also you drugs drove the, the, the student driver out. car around town right. everything was revolving yeah. around high school yeah, it's so good there's so there's I mean there are whatever you may say about this movie there's little needles in this movie that are just like that's pretty good. I like that. Mm-hmm. They wrap her in a volleyball net and they're just like, fucking take these drugs or we're going to shoot you in the head. Like, it's pretty dramatic at the end where they're just like, they have no chill at the end, basically. Like, yeah. do this or we're going to oh, yeah. shoot I you. I was on pins you know, and they was taking deep. more drugs. Yeah, very deep, Colin. Yep. Could you stop making fun of me for my <laughs> love of this movie? Yeah, thank you. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> but then they fucking like, shit goes wrong. They shoot her in the head and then, uh, what's her name? Mary... Mary Beth. Mary Beth Hutchinson. Yep. And fucking pours The girl from all, Georgia. 
the girl Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia. Georgia, yeah, right. Yeah. But pours all the fucking drugs on her, and she fucking disintegrates, and they have to figure out, well, like, well, maybe that was it. Like, was the principal the queen of this whole thing? But and did we ever think that, John? I, if you're doing it that early in the movie, you shouldn't, as an audience member, think that that's the end of it. I know, because if it, you're smart, that's well, your fake out. We should all know, because the principal was attacked by another teacher, so clearly. Right. So we should, as her. the audience, know clearly. that this is not the end of this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we're still trying to figure this Even out. Even though the principal was more attractive than anybody else in this movie. And you would think the more attractive I mean, well, when you, when you out attractive someone, I mean, that's though. attractive. I mean, uh, for me, it's John Stewart, but whatever. Well, that's <laughs> John Stewart's a handsome <laughs> dude. Fine. Don't get me wrong. Uh, that's very true. You, even with the goatee, really. Oh, God, yes. The goatee, right. yeah, well, the goatee also, doesn't like turns it off for me. Not, I, not I, to make, I, he's not a handsome to make dude. you uncomfortable, but it's kind of the teacher thing, too. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. What How many drinks have you had? Hello. Uh, what can I do to get my grade up, teacher? Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we all call our teachers teacher uh, back mean, in the day. Yeah. So that was Whatever. Just a thing. It's fine. And apparently, Josh uh, Hartnett is about to have an affair with his teacher because yeah. with the other alien from Men in to, Black. Once she becomes an alien, she's all talking to him about uh, cherry flavored condoms and all this other stuff, and you're like, whoa! But after, I love that after she is reverted back to her human form, she's still winking. At him. Still, I know. oh yeah, they're yeah, a thing. So from they're, the stands. So they're clearly having an affair, right? And, 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 oh, and, he's, just, and, he's, and he's the Danny Zuko because he's smoking as he's playing football. This is you the know? thing. This is the uh, uh, deleted scene I was talking about. Okay. That I wish yeah. was a uh, a post credit sequence. They filmed the scene where apparently they're in bed together. She wakes. What? What, what? This is it. She wakes up. Does After a Ellen hit Leterno, of the no pen way. of the you know the booger sugar the pen the booger drug. sugar <laughs> the pen the drug scat which yeah, is she's not a scat. colorful version of pornography no. that involves people right. shooting on each other no. that, that was it's boob a magazine it's a drug in this, this one yeah boob magazine <laughs> boob magazine you only get one calls. boob in this magazine no it's not even boobs it's boob yeah, magazine. yeah you, only, you only get to see one nipple so they're in, in bed she does a hit she does a hit and then they you know they they smile and make out and everything so like just to show that they're together so they really are having an affair. Right. Awesome. Exactly. Love it. Okay. That's Wonderful. why I got cut. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. She does a hit and then... She does drugs and then has sex with her student. Oh, okay. That's why that scene got cut out of the movie. Yeah. That's why they didn't too far. allow that. That's yeah, too, too far. far. Oh, too far. Wow. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. But instead, we get a giant alien uh, CGI character. CGI, I think, pra- partly practical, I think. In Part- the oh, yeah. There's, uh, created yeah. By yeah. Candy. Yeah. there's big practical parts of this because who is the... Uh, who do we find out is the queen? Like we get do we a scene. spoil it? Do we spoil it? I th- oh no, we spoil everything. We always okay. spoil. We get. Always I mean, spoil. we get a scene where we have Stokely and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the, obviously the new person in town. It's the Georgia to Peach. Town. <laughs> it the really Georgia is. Peach. Mm-hmm. Mary, the, the girl who, as far as we know, the actress. What's her name? We don't even Laura know. Harris. Yeah. Laura Harris. Laura Harris. Harris. Went on to do yes. nothing. A lot of TV. Okay. She did twenty four. A lot of TV. What's her name left? I think. The other blonde. Did she right. take her well, to the daughter, daughter or like, or like took yeah. the like? I don't know if she took the role or just took I the placeholder. I think she took the placeholder as like yeah, this like, person's well, in trouble. Jack like Bauer that. needs a, a, a damsel in distress. Probably who's yeah. an attractive blonde, yeah. so yeah. we're gonna put her in. Laura Harris. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. I for one am happy that humankind is able to rally together and find the spirit within to vanquish. This is him wrapping forces. up the show again. This yeah. is what he's doing. I can tell how much John likes this because he doesn't want the show to end. But they do. They they win. The, the how do they win? Are beaten yeah, back. at least say how they won. At Elijah how Wood saves the day. Like, at least tell him. Well, Terminator Elijah style. Woods, basically, what you have to do is give the alien an overdose of drugs that kills him. Yeah. A Terminator style. You pin him in the bleachers. And alien you, style. Out, no, Terminator out. style. Terminator style. Terminator oh, style. In the you presses. crush him into the... It, it, you it's said that on this like that's exactly how this Terminator movie goes. Wears yes. its influences on its sleeve. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It literally it had T one thousand in it. And it, it, it even had the T one thousand in it. Uh, Have you seen this boy? Like, yeah, yeah. So did we like this? Edward or? Furlong was in it for Ed, crying out yeah. loud. loud. Name dropped. So did we like this movie or didn't we? You're going to have to wait and stay with us through our mailbag, and you're going to find out, listener. But first of all, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. 
That's it? That's it. I got nothing for him. Nothing about the thing that's like hanging out of his nose. Oh, no, it went in through his ear, because that's how they yeah, get they it. Yeah, they all that's go through the ear. Go through the ear. pods go through the ear. I don't question things. I, I never question things I mean, hanging Igor, off of him. So, no, Igor has yeah. looked like he's been abducted by aliens for like yeah. three years, <laughs> I ignore, so I can't question how, I ignore any creatures yeah. hanging off of him. Yeah, that's I just, just don't want to know. how he lives. Yeah, just that's don't want to know. life, Colin. Don't judge him. You know, and don't for you judge to call him. attention to him is really like that's pretty. It's really rude. Well, I it's was rude. more it's commenting rude. on the way the alien orgasm, orgasm, <laughs> always, orgasms, always orgasms, organisms, or organisms, or orgasms, alien orgasms, orgasms get into your body. There is a little don't, life force in don't this. Don't say alien orgasms was, was, get into your was body. That, was that the life force for the naked lady that walking around? In, that yeah, yeah, in yeah, a there's a little life force in this. Have regular orgasms in Star Trek II. They get in through your ear. In life force, the naked lady walks around and kills people. That's true. Which yeah, happens, that, that, that happens in this, yes. but the, usually yeah. the squid creatures get in through the mouth. So this is odd that they get in through the ear. It has to be a Star Trek two callback because uh, Robert Rodriguez then cast Robert, Ricardo Montalban in Spy Kids three. Thought you were in Boom. a rush to wrap this up. I was gonna say this like we'll never <laughs> oh, no, know. No, no, you wanted to, to okay, it now during the how movie we get, okay, part so, of this podcast. So about why you're discussing it now, I don't know. The faculty about it. Okay. Brent Attica writes in and says, oh, Attica. wow, Attica. yes, Attica. your Attica. podcast. Attica. Attica. <laughs> okay. He okay. says, oh, wow, yes, your podcast is on a run. Another film that I absolutely love. You guys. <laughs> you. You guys. You. No, you. We. You. Us. You. I'm reading it with the, love the it. Uh, punctuation as yeah. is. Okay, so Dom Cree writes in and says, number one, I love Clea Duvall. Number yeah. two. Wait, wait, okay, yeah, I, I apologize. I, I'm out of the loop. Which one was she? Stokely. 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 Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah I dug her. From she's John done. Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars? You don't from know Clea Duvall? all that. I am, Thank I you very apologize. much. She's done a lot. Go find uh, number two, Lane Staley vocals on the soundtrack. And he just <laughs> yeah. uh, proved that Lane Staley is not on the soundtrack. He's a singer from Alice in Chains. It, unless he did like a guest spot, maybe, or maybe maybe his maybe that song but I like was that in the he movie. Also but not thought, in, uh, right? Yeah, 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 like yeah, like like, I think it the really purpose does. of this is to be like, we all right, we like Lane Staley. Like yeah. that's yeah. we all. Yeah. He is now. Yeah. Dead. Maybe, maybe he's on. Yeah. The, maybe he's on the movie, but maybe it's just not sold on the actual soundtrack. Maybe oh, like there's oh, they did that right because I was saying that sounded yeah. like uh, they, yeah. the, the band is like no, I don't want to. No, you can't sell my music. So, yeah, we'll do the movie. But We're you, not going to sell this. All right. Well, Dom says I can't remember much else. Of, Else, but those two points make me consider rewatching it. Well, do it. Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, Alice in Chains is not listed. Okay. So, you know, unless he's the lead singer for Class of '99. I don't know. Maybe he. Oh, maybe that was made up. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I don't think so. But uh, I don't think so. Or Asherwood uh -huh. writes in and says, "Watching this movie as though there's actually nothing wrong with the kids is just wait." Watching this movie as though there's nothing actually wrong and the kids are just insane is greatly entertaining. I love this movie. <laughs> I like that. I like, like that. They're actually completely delusional. Yeah, they're just yeah. killing teachers. Because they're all high on whatever it is. Because they're high. Because they're all high. That's I great. Sort of a Monty Python approach. I actually, sort of the Holy Grail. No. Like they're just insane in the this. forest. No, I actually had that right thought now. like halfway through this. I'm like, what if they really all just are tweaked out right now? Like, what if none of this is happening? Because at some point they all do the drugs. Yes. They're yeah. all just high and killing yeah. teachers. I, like I love that, that version I like of that. this movie. That would have been... Fuck. Wow. I, I, <laughs> I'll say this. That would have been really interesting. I think I would have preferred that ending. That's great. <laughs> Maybe that's what... Yeah, that would have been a nice, nice little happened. twist. Uh, about our episode Rambo 3, TGS 12371. Get no. a name. 12371. Get a name. Says from 90s teen slasher films, films to 80s kick ass blowing shit up films, right. all in one week. That's the way we do it. Hey, Miss Holly Joy. Oh, hey. Uh, he has a little face <laughs> no. with a love right, thing so on this it. Is a, a love then, thing. Hey, oh, like a, the winky kissy face. Yep. Aww. And then, hey, Phantasma Kayla with a sad face. Oh. No. Oh, so <gasps> he's a. Uh... He's, He's a lover, not a fighter. Yeah, he called me queen last week. Oh, yeah. Shit, so he does not like Aww. us. <laughs> so Brent Zemecki. I'm taking it back to the 80s. There's a love connection there. I think yeah. so. I That's think really nice. Connection. Brent Zemecki <laughs> writes in and says, I love the th Rambo 3 review, you guys. Also on topic, Rambo 5 had the a teaser one. poster released due out in 2019. That news was released, uh, Brent. 
the day after we yeah. recorded the podcast. Yeah, it's Kismet so, at that point. Well, we're, you know, wow. we have yeah. the powers. Yeah. Rambo 3 has to be my favorite Rambo we're on the, movie. Really? Uh, is it? Yeah, thank you it really very much, Chris. It, really, it has to be. because <laughs> Thank you. Again, it's because it came out when I was like 12. <laughs> yeah. and that, that's when like I, I thought Rambo was cool. Last week I yeah. faced a fucking gauntlet. Okay. Because no. okay. okay. you, didn't, you didn't call me. That's why. Colin is vindicated. I would have been in the pit with you. I would have been the octagon with you. Tag team partner. Brent also says, may I humbly recommend the Lou Lehman 1981 can exploitation film The Pit. The Pit. Which yeah, we watched we, the trailer. Colin and has watched the trailer for this before uh, the faculty. We time. are and intrigued. Yeah. Uh, is it, is it Canuck movie. or Canuck exploitation? I Canuck. believe. I think it's Canuck exploitation. Canuck exploitation. It, it looked I, fucking Canuck. great. I, it I think amazing. <laughs> that it's is about a guy, a kid freak with show a worthy. killer telly, teddy killer. bear. Well, a killer pit. Killer killer pit. Pit. Right. Teddy bear, but the teddy pit. bear tells them to bring them yeah. to the pit it's, to get killed. It's, it's very it's Teddy Rubskin is an evil kind of pre they, they, child's play. They thing. called it Canadian horror and after so special. Like I'm in. Yeah, I'm and, in. And what, what, what I love about it is it, it's, it's classic Canadian <laughs> horror, which is what I like. Really, this is like this is a thing. I didn't it's know Canadian horror was even a thing. It's put on the what? list. Black Christmas, my friend. That's Canadian. Uh, so much a thing that it's been exploited. Play with shouldn't play with that Canuck exploitation. Brent, I got. I tell you, I had never heard of this movie. Neither yeah. of yeah. It I looks it. pretty. Oh, yeah. so it looks intrigued. pretty it awesome. It has officially gone on the list, sort of my friend. <laughs> it is officially on the list. Yeah. Holly is the keeper yes. of the list. Uh, Brent also said about our episode in time. I thoroughly enjoyed your review of Just in Time, Bird Lake. No. Oh boy, very you very are. funny. A, I still a love long the film. Walk. I didn't realize that Roger Deakin shot the film, but I've always yeah. remember loving the cinematography. Wow, so Roger Deakin's sense. actually pretty amazing. Oh, he's very amazing. He's very good. And even when he's slumming it in movies like In mm. Time. Mm. But he slums it on purpose. Like, mm. he doesn't need to do... No, oh, he like doesn't. No, he's, he's... But he wants to, he is I think he has top class. control. Roger Deakin stuff, is so. pretty incredible. Uh, my unfab life writes in and says about In Time... And no one made a Jim Croce reference. I'm I, that, you know what? I, I wasn't bottle. there for In Time, but I love that movie. What's it's a Croce? It's Cro- Croce. Jim Croce. Yeah, Jim Croce. that's that is a deep cut '70s music reference. Yeah, if, right I there. Yeah. if I could keep time in a bottle. Yeah, if I could keep time in a bottle. I, if you don't like In Time, like you 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 have no soul. I, that's my thought. That's a because good that song. is an amazing amazing movie. We didn't recommend it. No, thank no, no. you. Oh, <laughs> that is, oh, man, I know I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> that, I love that movie. Uh, I've got a father and sons, man. Well, we talked. Cats in the Cradle. On that movie. <laughs> and the Silver Moon. About uh, the movie Gattaca, because it was yeah, uh, yeah, co- oh. It was directed by the guy who did that. And we yeah. really yeah. like Gattaca. Steve yeah. Coat, 1974, writes in and says, I remember enjoying Gattaca a lot in 1997. Does yeah. it still live up to expectations? I mean, I like Gattaca. But does it still hold up to expectations? I don't know. What is Because we watched In Time. We did. We didn't watch Gattaca. I'll say Gattaca does. It was a pretty good movie when I saw it. I mean, I like Gattaca. I would watch that fucking thing again. I uh, watched it a lot. I haven't seen H- it in a long time. H- yeah, a long HBO time. all the time. Love but it was movie. good when I saw it. In oh, it was very good. Uh, about, our episode, uh, about our episode, Humanoids from the Deep, Liquid uh, Screams writes in and says, I love this movie. As you the faculty? You no. No. And humanoids from the deep. Oh yeah, okay. humanoids from the deep. I feel you. Uh, Nathan Bartlett writes in and says, Who are you? "Okay, so this is a non-specific episode question. Okay. Well, here it comes. Okay, and I hope you are ready for this. Mm, we'll see. And we love this listener when you hit us up with this kind of yeah. shit because I appreciate it. Bring it. Yeah. Bring bring Give us some shit we're not expecting. Yeah. Nathan Bartlett writes in and he says, "If the movie Face Off, ooh, okay, I'm, well, I'm already in on whatever you want to yeah, say. I'm if in. it was remade uh-huh. and the lead actors recast, uh-huh. ooh, I love this. This is a multiple choice. That's great. Would you make the most confusing?" Rep- who would make the most confusing replacements for Nicolas Cage and John Travolta? A, Nick Nolte and Gary Busey. <laughs> B, Dylan McDermott and Dermot, Dermot Mulroney. Mulroney. I knew yeah. you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. C, Guy Fieri and Smash Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I wish Michaela was here right now. Oh, that's wonderful. Michaela would, would love us. D, Rob Zombie and Margot Robbie. Oh, 
What? <laughs> oh, I don't, the other ones made wow. sense to me. That one has to be a dig that I don't what? get at all. Sure, I don't understand. I, I'm not I don't sure get I've ever gotten Rob Zombie and Margot Robbie confused. I, I'm gonna go I, with. I, I'm uh, very, I, I, I get that. I right. Yeah. The other ones them very I get clearly. It. I'm gonna go with uh, Dylan McDermott and Dermot Mulroney. That's Here what I'm go going with too. I mean, That's my I might favorite. I go for the Guy Fieri Smash Mouth. I think Guy Fieri is the leader, the lead singer for Smash Mouth. So I want to find out. There you go. I think he's playing a double. Like the most insane version of it because are we singing and cooking go- at the same time? Do we oh, still have the same hair? Like, yeah. are we just. Uh, I think, right, because you're going to take a face off. Would you have face? to with Guy Ferreri yeah. and oh, Smash Mouth? I got to go with Dermot Dermot on that one. All right, Dermot Dermot. All right. Yeah. No yeah. more Dermot Dermot wins because Dermot's yeah. big. Yeah. Di- no, I don't get it. I mean, maybe. There's, there's <laughs> well, some I, good I options in there. That is the yeah. most yeah. intriguing yeah, that, that's one that's is the Rob Zombie switching faces with Margot Robbie. Am I right? I mean, I want to watch that. I still don't understand. I don't get it, but I want to watch it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around the room and we're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with... Colin, what did you think of the faculty? This faculty, is what the, Colin, the perspective don't. of time gives you. I twenty saw years, this twenty years, twenty, 20, 20 years. years this year. Or this is the twentieth anniversary. anniversary right here. Oh, yeah, we're celebrating it now before anyone else does. <laughs> will they? Is the question. Um, I think they will. Are they going to re-release this? I think. Here's the thing. They might, Chris. I don't know the. Uh, I think, again, nostalgia colors how you perceive this movie. I think if you were, you know, I mean, again, when I saw it, it was kind of uh, in that whole cluster of 90s teen films, which all kind of now, to me, have the same kind of look, feel, and sound. You know, they all seem like, I mean, I guess if I was going to pick one. That doesn't that help when Marco Beltrame is scoring all of yeah, them. But I would pick Scream probably. Yeah. As well, the, sure. well, I, right. I mean, it's far let's, superior. Let's, let's, let's stop sit. and let's eliminate Scream. Scream is yeah. amazing. Because we can't not pick Scream over everything Scream else. is really every, iconic. Every rational we have human to, being will pick right, Scream we have, first. So we have yeah. to get rid of it. <laughs> okay. And we have to realize Especially that there is a, a, yeah. genre, a sub-genre where every, everyone tried to exist, rip off Scream. Right. The rip off Scream. This is the sub-genre. And we have to realize that's a thing and we have to pick from there and then i would probably go with i know what you there did it is summer. They, Number um, two. Okay. Yeah, that is. Good. Uh, we're also keeping in the kevin williamson sphere we are. Of like since yes. he did all we these are. goddamn movies he did um this is like i'm a fan of robert rodriguez uh but i don't feel robert rodriguez when i watch this no. movie I like the people in it, which is probably the thing that this movie has going for it the best. It's like, oh, it's a star-studded cast. Yeah. True. Where you're like, look at all these people doing these, you know, whatever characters that they're doing, which is, you know, uh, off the beaten track for some of them. It's pre-Lord of the Rings for Frodo. Yep. You know. <clears throat> it's pre-Fast and Furious for... It, for uh, Drew Dan- 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 Yeah. For- Pre, like, yeah. Yeah. So that kind of gives it an interest. Um, Pre-Walter White for Josh Hartnett. Sorry, that's not a thing. <laughs> yeah, he, I don't think he was in Breaking. No, he wasn't. He no, wasn't. But, <laughs> because they're both making drugs. <laughs> no. But, uh, no, I apologize. Uh, yeah, it, 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 fell. it failed. Uh, it was gotcha. a fail. I it started off the podcast. The no, 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 it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> so, um, I think <laughs> the the problem that I had with it, both the first time and this time, is that it is a movie made by a filmmaker who is clearly paying homage to movies that he likes. And the movies he likes being Invasion of the Body Snatchers and The Thing and, you know, either Night of the Creeps or Shivers, you know, one of those. Or, um, you know, the David Cronenberg movie, mm. which may also be known as... They came from within. Maybe you saw another that title. Maybe you didn't, but it's called Shivers, I think. But it's David Cronenberg. It's yeah, oh, they, it's the right. slugs that, that crawl into you I and know, take you I've over. Never seen and then the Night of the Creeps is like it. because of the yeah, okay. Um, so you're saying I need to go back and watch Shivers because that is the well, generation a, of all these things that came. It's a after contagious it. disease movie. That's the Cronenberg yeah. body horror deal, he, sure. and everybody becomes a hive mind kind of thing. So this has been going on forever. And like this movie doesn't something we didn't discuss. 
But that, this doesn't bring like a uh, one of the many things we didn't discuss. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. But we apologize, listener, if you were is there, waiting. Is for there a connectivity between the mother and the rest of like is that is that presented throughout this movie? No, that there is a connection. I don't think she so. says basically, I don't think so. if you become one of my, you know, become part of me, uh, you'll become beautiful, and you won't. You'll lose your identity, basically yeah. your individuality. That's the thing that, that that all these movies. This owes a debt to John Carpenter. This is very much the thing. It's very much Halloween. Mm -hmm. It's very much, you know, uh, Escape from New York. You have to maintain your individuality in the face of conforming to whatever the masses are. And uh, and the the idea of Robert Rodriguez or Kevin Williamson, that's by uh, our hero is a drug dealer. And you have to do drugs in order to open your mind in order to be able to see that, you know, once you do the drugs, you're like, holy shit, this is, you know, this will determine who is and who is not. Uh, party, you know, like the real people, and the other people are all these faceless evil authority figures or whatever. Which is now when I watch it, I'm like, you know, you're hit by the whole like 90s disaffected youth. They're like, what are you disaffected by? You've got like everything, you just, you know, the economy was great, <laughs> yeah, everybody could have a job, yeah, yeah. But all the kids in the 80s Pre were like, in you know, men. 80s movies were like, uh, a lot more, uh, relatable because they weren't like you didn't fucking hate them right now right as soon as you met them were like in 90s movies and 2000 era movies and i'm looking at you friday the 13th part you know remake i'm looking at you texas chainsaw massacre movie. the beginning that this stars jordana brewster movie. where i hated the people as soon as i met them so i don't care if they get killed yeah, um, that is a problem. That's a problem, I think, with this movie, even though it's trying to say like that's part of its uh, idea, basically. We're going to introduce you to a bunch of horrible people who are disaffected because everybody else around them is horrible. And once everybody else becomes like part of the collective... Like that makes him even more horrible. I don't know. It's Do you just, think they're horrible people? <clears throat> like all the characters were introduced. Uh, did you to? see Do you think the Elijah opening Wood scene? is a horrible person? Well, but, uh, Elijah Wood's the only is person who's like, not horrible. Yeah, he's Josh, well, everybody is else Josh is Hartman pretty much horrible? a douche. Yeah, he's a horrible he's person. He's horrible. Yeah. Why yeah. is he horrible? Because he is like going out there. I mean, the is Cleo Duvall horrible? Why she's is she a missing throat. Right, she but hates this everybody her, else. This make she's her a, a miserable person. person. She's a miserable person. You don't identify person. with a person who doesn't like other people? Because she's a miserable person. She doesn't like everybody. That's what I'm saying. That's the difference. <sighs> but she tries. Like, we're talking about... No, she like, does. She does. She tries with I mean, the, 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 like, she tries the, 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 the new girl comes changes. up to her. Like, she's trying to... And, like, says, hey, I'm so-and-so. And she's like... But we go on from that, and she's trying. Like, the new girl forces her into trying to, like, you know, to try and relate to... Why are you my science lab? Exactly. She's, she's trying to get her to conform. But that, does that make her a horrible person? Like I never to, said she was. I'm well, not what I'm saying, but like she's <laughs> no, not she's horrible. she's not a horrible person. Who, but she's who, just, okay, let's she's turn it just introverted. She's she's you know retreated into herself. And, but by doing who, so, she basically is. Which like, one is a like everyone else? Yeah, That's we, a horrible person. Let's turn this around. Which one's a likable person besides John Stewart? I mean, which one's but a likable? Not part person? of the teen. Club. Yeah, exactly. You can't look at sure. the teachers because they are all eventually become the enemy. So, which is you know, another faculty. adolescent yeah, fantasy, right, and it's yeah. a movie called The Faculty. And by the way, the tagline for this movie was "Take me to your teacher." Take me, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. which is a good tagline. Like and, and by that. and Horvish. by Tommy like Hilfiger, yeah. I'll take that. Take me to your uh, teacher. I think Josh Hartnett is supposed to be the coolest. Oh, I think sure, so. Of yeah, course. right. Or Jordana Brewster. You don't, I think. You don't, I, I think Ordana or Jordana Brewster. You don't cast Josh Hartnett are. if you don't want him to be the cool right. guy. Yeah, but I don't. List. I think Jordana Brewster comes off as she's the bitchy rich girl, and so yeah. I don't think she's necessarily as relatable. She's as, the Molly Ringwald. I from think Mary, Breakfast Club, Mary not Beth, Pretty Pink. But Mary Beth is probably the one that you're supposed to go like. She's the decent person in this thing, and then the movie subverts that and says, surprise, she's actually the alien menace, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, yeah, I don't know. It just feels, you know, now watching it, I'm like, well, if I want to go see a better version of this movie, and this is, I guess, what I was thinking about while I was out having a smoke earlier. Was, <laughs> where, where Colin does most of his thinking. Where I do most of my thinking. Uh, the idea that, like, I watched Invasion of the Body Snatchers when I was a kid, and it's about disaffected adults. But as a kid, I liked it. And it, that movie, I think, is a classic. I watched The Thing as a kid, but it's about disaffected adults. And, you know, who can't trust each other, whatever. And I, you know, same thing. Thought it was amazing. And I liked it. He doesn't like teenagers. This is a movie about teenagers. <laughs> he doesn't like it. But it's because 
it's because a I don't think they behave like real teenagers, which I don't think a lot of movies do anymore. Anyway, yeah, uh, I don't think they ever did. Movie, frankly, teenagers. I don't think they ever did. But at least frankly. they tried in some way. It used to be like you'd show kids in movies doing stuff that ki- actual kids do, and now they're like, we can't show this because we're afraid to set a bad example that kids will see this movie and actually do this behavior. Right. They're doing drugs. Yeah, but I'm like, kids get into some awful shit. Kids don't do drugs because you're trying to prove you're not an alien. Just don't do that. Yeah. yeah. That should be a PSA. Yeah. But I guess that's how I wrap this up is that uh, I would rather go back to those movies, which I think are the the classic versions of the story, than see the movie that's like, here's, you know, whatever, a 90s version of that story. But it, I don't think, I think, like, again, I said earlier, you have to do it better than the original one did it. Sure, yeah. And if you're stealing scenes. Or subvert it in a way that makes it entertaining. Right. Which right. I which think the better. Hateful yeah. Eight, the Hateful Eight yeah. Tarantino's version of The Thing, and it's like, okay, this is a, it's The Thing, but it's done in a different way that I don't, you know, it's not the, the exact same thing. If you're going to steal lines and dialogue from the fucking other movie, and you can't improve on them. Then you got to go see the other movie. The other movie is the standard bearer, and that's the one you got to see. So I don't know. I didn't have a really good time watching it the first time. I thought it was like, eh. And this time it was kind of the same uh, thing. So 20 years didn't improve the Im- experience. So, uh, Chris, what do you think of the faculty? I, I have to plead a little ignorance up front here. I, I, I <laughs> thought I had Explain seen this movie this us, 20 years Explain ago. Explain what you thought you were getting into. <laughs> I really thought uh, Ernie Hudson was the bad guy because <laughs> I thought I'd seen the faculty, but apparently I saw a, another 90s movie about teenagers rebelling against their faculty called The Substitute <laughs> with Tom Barrett and Ernie Hudson. Um, so I I apologize. When I came here, I thought I was watching that movie, and I came here, and I'd never seen this movie before. And uh, this is no Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It is no The Substitute. Um, I, I think <laughs> oh, I enjoyed that movie more, but again, it's been 20 years since I've seen that movie. Um, anytime the rebels in a 90s movie is, is, is demarking themselves as the rebels by playing Offspring, that's your first clue that they're probably not all that that rebellious but again it goes back to are any of these characters that likable mm-hmm. and if you can't like anybody why do you care um i really did enjoy the moment where the old lady's in the shower i, I guess that, that was like the only redeeming moment that i found that was sort of a legitimate creep factor thing that i thought was kind of new and maybe i'm just not as versed in the horror genre but that's something i'd never seen before like is that really uh, also the goriest movie? The part we get in this movie, I think it is. But I mean, well, yeah. you, know, well, you, you, you get, you get, you know what? I, I don't know. He's probably seventeen in the shower. He's the stud. He's, you know, he's the captain of the football team, and he's like, "Hey, I'm a handsome stud." And he, you know, a lady walks in the shower, and you're like, "Oh," hey. and then it happens to be like an eighty year old woman that's about to like, you know, fall I got apart in front of, fall apart oh, in front of him shining. and eat his brain. I was yeah, gonna say, I was shining. gonna say, well, it's I, I get, the I'm shining. not as versed. Uh, I apologize. It's the bathtub scene in yeah. the Shining. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so that was a legitimate creepy, but it still wasn't worth, I guess, the price of admission. Although this does explain exactly to me why Wilfred is a show, because Elijah Wood is messed up. Um, I, 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 I thought he was fun. Um, but what, about halfway through the movie, I was wondering when they start, when everybody was going to start dying finally. And that's a bad sign. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a little too self. Re- it, it tried to be self referential, like Scream, uh, with the body snatchers and the puppet masters connections. Um, but it also tried to be a, a, almost a self parody, uh, and, and never did either one enough. And so, it, it, so it, to me, it came across as it, it didn't do enough to be in on its own jokes. So it, it ended up not being as entertaining as it could have been. Um, but uh, I, I thank God that, that John Stewart and Elijah Wood still have a career. <laughs> it, it, I really do. Uh, because it, it, it kind of fell flat for me. So Holly. Um, yeah, no, I think you guys have, have hit on the, the main points here. It comes down to that. We really don't care about anyone in this movie. And that, that is t- usually a problem with with movies. It can be. It can be. You know, you you want to like somebody. <laughs> you you want to root for somebody. And in this, I'm just like, I don't give a shit. Uh, maybe a little about Shooter McGavin. I hope he's okay. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want anything to happen to him. Um, 
But yeah, no, I, I didn't I didn't feel for any of these characters and a lot of them I just found really irritating. Um and I agree that everything was just too derivative. It, it didn't it didn't have any sort of um any foundation of its own, it just seemed like it was ripping off these other movies. I don't think that it came across as an homage. It came across as just sloppy because I don't I didn't feel like anyone really knew what the point was going to be of this. Um, it, it just it just felt kind of all over the place like it didn't have it, it didn't have the, the, the body work. To to really solidify what was happening, um, I get I got that it was this you know invasion kind of movie or in, like invasion of the body snatchers kind of movie, but it just didn't feel like it, it didn't feel put together. I guess um, so. Yeah, it wasn't really working for me. I will say my favorite part was in the the biology lab when the when John Stewart came in that because we, we didn't talk about that. That was my favorite scene when he <laughs> snapped off the the paper cutter. And used yeah. as a sword. Oh, yeah. Off his great. Yeah. yeah, I think that's great. He stabbed him in the eye and then cut off his fingers. That part was fantastic, and what made it even better was the end credits with the picture credits. And John that's Stewart, wonderful. John Stewart had the eye patch, and his and hand was wrapped up, and he was great. just smiling. Yeah, that was a nice reference. All that was a nice reference. Later came, but that's a that, great. That like was, realizing where your oh character's God. at and coming back to be like, he's got an eye patch now and his fingers are gone. That's, that's how they, how they capitalized on some of that parody. I think it was yes, exactly. really That's worked. what I'm saying. Right. Like it, this movie felt all over the place because it had these moments that referenced other movies and it had these moments that were supposed to be funny, but they weren't. And that was the one moment I'm like, you nailed it. You, we got what you yeah, were when doing John comes back. and it yes. works like right. that worked for me. Like the whole scene was just a really good scene. I liked it a lot. It felt right. Like it made sense that John Stewart's character was all of a sudden this like menacing person and he wasn't supposed to be. And they, they had that moment where, like where he tossed him the, the sword, if you will. And they stabbed it. It just the felt like, cutter sword, it felt like cool. such that's, a great scene. That's one of my scene. favorite scenes yes. of this movie. It was just like Zeke. And he just yes. flipping, tosses him. I was like, grabs this, him. like he's ready. Like, the music behind the, it also. Exactly. Yeah, I was like this well is the it. teen horror movie that I want. This scene right here. And if the whole thing had been that scene, I would have liked this movie. But that was really the only part that just that really worked for me. So I can't say overall that I recommend the fact. Yeah, and on a side note, being a teacher, I, I do have to tell you that there. Does this there ever is, happen to you? I, alien invasions? No, not, not alien invasions, but but fingers being cut by the paper cutters. Oh yeah, yeah, that's oh, actually a really oh, popular oh. popular thing among yeah. teachers. Yeah, because they're a hurry. Yeah, it actually does. And oh Jesus! Just, yeah, like they're they cut dangerous. off like the nubs of their fingers. I mean, uh, by what does that? I, I asked, what does that say about the mechanism versus what does that say about the people operating that machinery? So, uh, like, it's, which, it's, it, I, who's it? I'm going to say this, but then you're going to see me do it. In about a week. Um, it, it's not that complex a machine. No. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, what no. I'm thinking. Paper, but then again, blade, you're done. <laughs> right. you get know, your fingers out of the way. You, you, but I don't know. I don't know. But that is one of the most common um, that's disability claims for teachers is when they cut their own finger off. With their finger. <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful. It's no joke. Oh my God. We were actually warned about that the other day by HR. I'm sure yeah. that's a video you got to watch when you like. So <laughs> right yeah. you watch the video. Yeah. And, and, and then another video that we actually watch is to never actually close the door or, or, or create a blind between you and the hallway, which is what exactly what John Stewart does when yes. he decides to kill the kids. Uh, it's like, you know yeah. something bad is about to right. happen, like, you know, you're about to like beat a kid when you sh- when you right. close that blind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All, like, yeah, yeah, like I don't want anybody to see this. So like, well, you know, he's a bad guy now. He yeah. shut the blind. Yeah, it feels yeah. great. We're so just it's like, it's <laughs> nice that in that same scene, they do both the things you're never supposed to do as a teacher: <laughs> shut the blind or cut your own finger off. I can see that teacher video. It's just like, so you know, you're a teacher. <laughs> yeah, these are the things. You <laughs> Wait, is your video know. done by Captain America? Because it kind of uh, seems kinda like is. it. <laughs> yeah, kind of is a little bit. Oh. Uh, ooh, the faculty. Um, Sean, what did you think? What, what do I think of about the faculty? The faculty? Um, I'm going to be a lot more forgiving than the rest of you were, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, my thoughts, I'm, maybe my thoughts of this movie are are completely blinded by, by nostalgia. You know what? Um, I think I'm prepared. There's nothing wrong with that. There's well, nothing wrong with that. What I'm saying, yeah, well, what I'm saying is I'm prepared to live in that world where that's how I feel about this movie because I... Still enjoy the hell out of this movie. I like these characters. I like the kind of, uh, I like the cast that was assembled for this because um, I still, 
uh, recognize these characters as they've gone on from this movie, like Jordana Brewster. I know mm-hmm. Cleo Duvall is still doing stuff, and Elijah Wood, obviously. Josh Hartnett, um, you know, he's still doing Usher. stuff. Usher, obviously, <laughs> still doing things. Um, so, um, I, I, I mean, I like the characters in this movie. I mean, say what you will about them, but I, and I like the little things with. I really like the cast of this movie, and I think that's a big thing for me. Selma Hayek and and uh, Robert Patrick, and I th- I like everybody they brought into this movie, and I think that's um, I think that has a lot to do with why I like it and how everyone acts in this movie. I still find this movie fun, and uh, I like what all the actors are doing in this movie. I, I like the things they reference. I like. I just like the '90s feel of this movie and that soundtrack. <laughs> oh no, I, yeah, I will very live. 90s. I will live in the '90s of things, and I, I like where this movie lives in the '90s of everything. The soundtrack I think is great. As we we're listening to this thing, I'm like, I want to fucking buy the soundtrack. I want to find whoever put this together and see if it's still out there. Um, you, I'm, you can blame it on nostalgia, and I'll be right along with you. But I, I still like this movie, and I want to watch it again. I fucking recommend <laughs> the faculty. I think that's got. <laughs> That yeah. Marco Beltrami score <laughs> on it, and everything. Man. On it. There is there is shit about this movie that will never get old to me. Like say what you will about Marco Beltrami and his career and what he does, but I like what he does for movies like this, and I'm all for it. I like this movie, and I'm gonna fucking watch it again, despite mm-hmm. all of you. So yeah. I recommend the fucking <laughs> faculty. It, man. It's got those fucking actors. Oh yeah, I like Did it. You bring Urban Legend two to the. Show. I brought Urban Legend. Urban Legend, not yeah. two. One of them. All right. I brought okay. Urban Legend, but ah right, oh, sure. fuck, I I like this movie. I'm yeah, I'm down for it. I recommend it to all of you. <laughs> Let's do it. Own it, man. Faculty. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that is the faculty. The final word on the faculty. I was trying to work in some alliteration. I don't know if that worked. Yeah, uh, the fucking faculty. Yeah. The fucking <laughs> final word. No. All right. On the know. faculty, on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And so that means that next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. Holly, we're watching next week. Next week, we are Please watching. be the pit. Please be the pit. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm really starting to give into peer pressure here. <laughs> um, the pit is on the list. Yeah, it's definitely on it's the on list. It's on the list. It's on everybody's list um, at this point. But I feel like I have American to. American Ninja. I feel like I have to stick with what I what I chose. Sure. Um, we're taking a listener recommendation. Oh, no. And we're watching Samurai Cop. Ooh, Samurai nice. Cop. Samurai Cop. I don't know Sounds anything good. about this. Nice. I watched the trailer and it looks ridiculous. It's called Samurai Cop. I, or, Samurai and, and Cop. Yeah, the yeah, title, yeah, just it smashed be together. First, there was RoboCop. A compound. Then there was Samurai Ninja Cop. And now teacher. there's Samurai <laughs> yeah. Cop. Yeah. All right. Can't wait. That's next week on Saturday at Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. Please do. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>